This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series and the National Championship Game. Just two weeks ago, ranked number two, Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions saw Minnesota Prayer answered a final play upset that left a once undefeated team down and out to the national title chase. Further disaster followed, a fourth quarter collapse that cost a trip to Pasadena. Today, they look for a reappearance of Penn State Pride. But Michigan State has its own mission. The season's already reaped rewards at Notre Dame, and a perfect home record included wins over Michigan and Ohio State. Penn State is next on the hit list as the Spartans point towards New Year's Day. On a gray, cool day in East Lansing, Michigan, Spartan Stadium about set to warm up as 28 seniors play their final game on this field. The Big Ten standings up to date after what just went on up the road in Ann Arbor. Michigan a winner over Ohio State today. Penn State and Michigan State in the thick of things in the bowl picture. The question is, where do they go bowling? And will it be on New Year's Day or will it be late in 1999? Hi everybody, I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to East Lansing and Spartan Stadium. This is a game of clubs that at the beginning of the season one was unranked in Michigan State Penn State was ranked number one now they find themselves fighting to stay in the BCS picture my partner is Bob Greasy Bob you know for Penn State two weeks ago they were in that sugar bowl cluster there the sugar's falling out of the bowl now after back-to-back -back losses and the petals fell off the rose last week what do they look for this week well the expectations were very high this is a team that returned 18 starters from last year's team the thing today for Joe Paterno and uh, his coaching staff is to get this team back and get them to play this ball game. I think they need to turn to their seniors and especially the seniors on their defense. Brandon Shard is unquestionably the leader of this defense and this team and he's got to get them going. Everybody in the Big Ten hit a stretch where they lost at least two games in a row. Same thing happened to Michigan State after starting 6-0 and but they're on the upswing now. Well they're on a roll and as you mentioned no expectations unranked before the season. If they win this game today it's been 33 years since the national championship team in 66 since they won nine games. They could go bowling and a big bowl on New Year's Day. That's what we're going to watch for. A great matchup between the Spartans and the Nittany Lions of Penn State is coming up next. The big S stands for state, and there are a couple of players who are hoping they're wearing an S on their chest, as in super. Hello, I'm Lynn Swan. Welcome to the sidelines, or in this case, the fans for Penn State today. They're going to have to have the big play, and number two, Shafi Fields, is going to be their number one target. He's had two receptions, over 70 yards. He's going to have to have that kind of big day if Penn State's going to come out on top. But there is a big-time receiver from Michigan State. Plexic Plexico Burris was number four. He's a tall guy, great athlete. He can go up in the air for the ball. He's going up against small defense back. So for look, look for him to make a huge play downfield. Now, folks, I'm a wide receiver. I love to see the big games and the big plays. I think we're going to see a lot today, and the outcome is going to depend on those wide receivers. So I'm going to head back down the field to enjoy it. My new best friends in the stands, <laughs> I think they're going to have a lot of fun. All right, Swanee, watch that kid on your right. He's a camera hog. <laughs> well, we've got football weather. Joe Paterno, 316 victories. The last losing streak of three games was 11 years ago. Nick Saban, his best season yet in East Lansing. And looking for a ninth win. And they haven't been to an upper-tier bowl game since 1988, also 11 years ago. Penn State won the toss and deferred, so they'll kick, and Michigan State set to receive. And back deep, that's Herb Haygood. Little John Flowers will flank him, and Michigan State's offense will be on the field first. Travis Forney about set to tee it up. Last year was 51-28 in this one. Penn State, a big winner, but two years ago on this field, it was all Michigan State. One team, nine and two, one eight and two. They're tied in the Big Ten. The final regular season game of the Big Ten season for these clubs, and we're underway. A high kick. Hager can't run it at the five. Straight up the middle of Hager. Cuts outside across the 40, across midfield. Flips on his own and goes down to the 44-yard line. Trying to avoid the kicker. 
And Haygood lost his footing, but he takes it 51 yards. Well, they must have been working on their kickoff returns because they're ranked last in the NCAA in kickoff returns, 114, but not in the opening kickoff. Great blocking up the center, and Haygood just takes himself down. So great starting field position for Burke in the offense. Toss sweep. Only back to the line of scrimmage, though, for Lloyd Clemens. Let's check the Chile starting lineup. The biggins up front for Michigan State. Paco, a question mark with an injury. Sakura, Jensen, Mason, and Robinson Randall. The backfield, or rather wide receivers, Burris and Gary Scott with Chris Baker, the tight end. And in the backfield with Bill Burke, the senior, playing his final game. Lloyd Clemens, who just carried there. DeWan Moss is the fullback. No gain on the opening snap. Second down and 10. Michigan State at the Penn State 44 yard line. Play action. Burke. Some good. Gary Scott, the offensive captain, down to the 27 yard line. Defensively for Penn State. Here's how they line up. Courtney Brown, an All American at one end. Kirpakis, the other. Flytower and Kennedy are inside. Two Butkus finalists in Brandon Short and LeVar Arrington and Mac Morrison ain't bad either the secondary the best cover man David Macklin Adams Fox and Anthony King round out the secondary first down at the 28 yard line for Michigan State after the great opening kick return here's Clemens got to the 26 that's all a pickup of two well Bill Burke is off to a good start and he much would prefer to play the friendly confines right here. Look at what he's done at home. 12 touchdown passes, only two interceptions at home, but away, the 12 interceptions have been costly, especially in the two losses, both losses occurring on the road. Three wideouts for Michigan State on a second and eight. Kind of unusual, LeVar Arrington on the sideline. Bird. New side, got his man complete, keeping his footing is Richardson, and he spins his way to the 20-yard line, about two yards shy of a first down. And keep in mind, Bill Burke is playing in some pain, a pectoral muscle below his shoulder near his ribs. We asked him about how he's progressed this week to get ready for the game. Well, it's just a you know, rib out of place and, and some muscles that, that are sore uh, because of that rib, and, and I just gotten a little bit better each each day and, and really just kind of rocked it out of my head and, and got prepared to play Penn State. You know, it's just uh, part of the game when, when you have to play with some pain, and, and that's just what I'm going to have to do. Just a rib out of place. Have a rib out of place sometime. Here's Duckett. He's got Michigan State in the end zone. Touchdown. Michigan State using him only as a running back. Ball Edinger for the four after. The interesting thing there, LeVar Arrington was not on the field for that first drive. 7-0. Spartans. And Joe Fine's troops haven't even touched it yet, nor have they touched P.J. Duckett. Haygood's kick return set him up at the 44. T.J. Duckett caps off the 44-yard touchdown march. 20 yards straight up the middle against Joe Paterno's defense. Paul Edinger set to kick. Kenny Watson and Larry Johnson wait on it for Penn State. What a way for the Spartans to start in the first couple minutes. Kenny Watson draws a bead from the goal line. Nice coverage on special teams. They drop him at the 14-yard line. Sean Wright made the tackle. And let's go back to the touchdown, Bob. Well, LeVar Arrington was not in on that first defensive series. It, must, it may have been a disciplinary thing. Or the, he's, here's the man that's subbing for him, number three, Graham. Watch as the ball comes through here. Number three, Graham will be blocked. 
Nice job on the interior offensive line right there. A couple missed tackles by Fox and Adams. But, uh, you know, it's, I'm just guessing here, but I don't think he's injured. I think it was a disciplinary thing that he didn't start the ball game. We're going to talk to Smalley after this play out on the field. It's Penn State from its own 14-yard line. Harris, a single setback. Shoppy fields in motion, gets a call on the end of the round. Shoppy fields, got a first down on the first carry of the game out. 13-yard pickup on the first down, and he's he injured. Heard, yeah, I think he hurt himself. He slid there, and it looked like he did something to his hip. Oh, got dragged down in a kind of awkward position after that run. Not a good start for Penn State. How often have you seen Joe Paterno start a series that looks for the reverse? Go ahead, Lenny. Oh, awkward landing on the yeah. hip and the left knee. Not a good start for Penn State. They get scored on the first drive on their defense. And they get their best big play guy hurt. Sam Crenshaw takes his spot, and that's where Thompson goes on the pass. After the 30, where Ronaldo Hill swarms around him a pickup of two. Let's check in with Swarley. Well, Brad, as you know, Penn State doesn't give injury information, so we may not be able to find out just exactly what happened to Shafi Field. But as far as LeVar Arrington was concerned, he appears not to be injured. He's on the sideline. He's got his uniform on. He was talking to players on the sideline when they came off from that last defensive effort and gave no indication of having any kind of injury. Yeah, I saw him warming up before the game, Lenny, and he didn't seem to be injured at all. Pick up a three on the pass play, second down and seven for the Nittany Lions on their opening drive of the ball game. Trailing already seven of them. Crenshaw in motion. And it's a fullback, Sam Miller. And they got him wrapped up after a gain of about a yard. Robert Smith made the stop. Penn State's offensive line, they're worried about that inside group of Cole, Ransom, and Caruso. McKenzie and Blick are the tackle. The wide receivers, well, Choppy Field started, but played only one play. Eddie Drummond has great speed. Tony Stewart's the tight end. And in the backfield with Kevin Thompson is Eric McCoo and Mike Saramelli, the fullback. And both had huge games last year against Michigan State. Losing Field, Choppy Field, would be crucial. 38 receptions on the year, five touchdown passes. He is their big play guy. Third down at six for the Nittany Lions. Blitz is coming. Thompson in trouble. Got rid of it. Stewart is tight end. Should have had it. Drops it. And Penn State's got to give it up. Kevin Thompson on a safety blitz from Thomas Wright had to dump that thing in a hurry. Still should have been caught, though. Exactly. The good news, Fran Ganner, the offensive coordinator, saying our quarterbacks have to recognize the defense, get their hot reads, and get rid of it. He did. He just didn't catch the football. Gary Scott, the all-time punt return leader for Michigan State, waiting on Roy's kick. High spiral. Scott says clear out, everybody, and hits the sideline, and they're going to spot it out at about the 33-yard line. So Michigan State in front, and All-American on the sideline waiting his turn. 7-0 Michigan State, four and a half minutes into the first quarter, and they take over their second offensive series at their own 33-yard line. First down, Dan, Michigan State, ball at the start of Duckett, a touchdown on the opening drive. This is first to throw. Sails that one high, and Scott made a great one-handed catch. I thought that one was going to sail all the way to the Penn State. I did, too. I want to thank you very much, Gary Scott. Well, oh, he pulled that one down. I'm sure when Bill let that go, he says, oh, gee, I overthrew him. Look at this. What a catch. Scott is 6-1 and um, made a great catch there. Now they go to a two tight end set. Second down, one, Michigan State. And both wide out Scott and Burris to the near side. On second and two, Baker in motion. Lloyd Clemens puts his head down and goes down at about the line of scrimmage. Lamar Harrington not in the game. The word we are receiving from Penn State is that it's a right shoulder problem. And they're missing a guy that is a Buckus and Lombardi and about four other award possibilities. <laughs> Nine sacks, an interception, or a touchdown. And they're also missing uh, kick Anthony, blocker. Anthony. Yeah, exactly. A kick blocker and Anthony King, their starting corner. 
foot problem for Anthony King will be in tow. And here's the big guy again, T.J. Duckett, out to the 47 first down as we go out to New York and John Saunders. John. Right here on the Burger King update, Stanford trying to lock up the Pac-10. They led it 7 to nothing. Then on the kickoff, Delta O'Neal takes it a yard deep, and this will be a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. His four interceptions return for touchdowns this year. That's an NCAA record, and now add this one to it. They are tied early at 7 apiece. Brad. Stanford thinking Rose Bowl, Penn State and Michigan State thinking possible BCS involvement. Burt throws out complete. That's Adler McCoy, the other tight end. And he's got a first down. Silver has complete. And the 40-yard line, Matt Moore is right about him. We showed you the graphic on Bill Burt. He's playing at home versus on the road. It's key that they get him off to a good start. From behind the defense, quick passing, three steps, hit your tight end on a slant to the outside. Bill Burke has as good of receivers to throw to as any quarterback in the Big Ten. The two wide receivers and the tight end. Well, he's off to that good start right now, Bob. Four for four. He can be streaky good, and he can go south on you in a streak, as he did against Purdue. Motion over on the far side. Plactico Burris came out of his stance over there in front of David Macklin. That's going to be five yards against Michigan State. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. Let me back it up near the 45. Well, we talked about the Dell game solutions for Michigan State. Get Bill Burke off to a good start. Get the ball to the wide receivers and let him make some big plays. Defensively, set the tempo for the victory. The seniors on that defense and Brandon Sharp have got to stop the run and pressure the passer. And they haven't done either so far. They gave up a 20-yard touchdown run. First down at 15. All the Spartans leading by seven. Burke rolls and throws, and it's in and out of the hands of Burris in front of Macklin. And it would have been back to the original line of scrimmage. Check in with Lynn Swan. Brad, during the pregame warm-up, I was talking to Jerry Sandusky, and he indicated that his defensive unit was pretty banged up. Not, but he did not obviously say that uh, LeVar Arrington would not be playing. And, you know, this week, uh, the team took it very easy. A lot of workouts without pads. They wanted to rest the team, not have a lot of contact. And one of the things that people don't understand is in the Big Ten, a tough conference, when you play game after game of tough competition, it takes a toll on you for the next week. And especially that game last week, he talked with us this week about how physical the Michigan game was. They beat each other up last week. Well, when you talk about physical teams, you got to throw Michigan State right in there at the top. Yep. Six-yard pickup for Duckett back across the original line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up third down and about nine. Joe Paterno's defense has been in for 88 plays each of the last two games. And as Jerry Sandusky said, they were tired and fatigued at the end of last year's grassroots game against Michigan. Michigan State by a touchdown at 39 at the Penn State 39. Three wide outs and Burke will work from the gun. Getting some pressure. Struck to his left will back across his body and Bowsview should have had an interception. He dropped it. No doubt about it. That's what Penn State wants to do is get pressure on Burke, get him out of the pocket and forcing the throw to run. Jew should have had it. That would have turned this momentum around for the Nittany Lions from the last two weeks to right now get something going in this ball game. Greg Jarrett second in the Big Ten, set the kick to Bruce Branch, who took one the distance. 79 yards against the Wolverines last week. Somebody for the Lions has got to make a play to get them jump started. Five steps. He got the kick away, an end over end job. That's still about kind of bounce near the 10. And they're spotted at the 12. That's where Penn State will take over their second offensive series. When we come back, it's the Spartans by seven. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler back at Spartan Stadium. Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions have the ball back at their own 12-yard line, trailing 7-0. Coffee Fields is back in there at wide receiver. Well, apparently he's all right. 
Jack Johnson thrown back to his tight end. Short gain, about four after John Gilmore. And defensively for Michigan State, the Chili's front wall, Robert Smith, their leading sacker, Boo Boo Thompson, a big target on the other end. Shaw and Saylor are the tackles. The linebackers are rangy. Julian Peterson, a big play guy. T.J. Turner had an all-Big Ten week last week. And Thornhill, the other linebacker. And in the secondary, Amp Campbell and Ronaldo Hill are the corners. Richard Newsom and Eric Morris are the safeties. Here's the talk to McCoo trying to get outside. And he does get the corner and got a first down out to the 23-yard line. Last week, it was a horrible ground attack for Penn State against Michigan. They were held to seven yards rushing on 20 carries, and that's the worst ever under Joe Paterno. So they're already off to a better start with that carry by McCoo. McCoo last year against Michigan State over in Happy Valley, however, ran for over 200 yards. And the fullback, Sarah Valley, had 75 yards and two touchdowns as well. He's the up man in the eye on the first down. Play action for Thompson. For Fields, he overshot him. And out there covering was Amp Campbell. Kevin Thompson last week, you talk about taking a beating in a physical game against Michigan. They hit him and hit him and kept on hitting him. Until Joe Paterno even said, I was wondering if he'd ever get up. That's Niles Diggs earlier in the season. That slightly separated his shoulder. But here was last week against Michigan. Watch this one in the chin. Oh, ouch. I talked to Kevin last night and talked about that hit as he goes complete to his tight end after the 25-yard line. I said, how's your jaw? Were you eating soup through a straw? With? <laughs> he was hit so hard he had five stitches in his chin and the TMJ joint on the right side basically it's like taking a door off the hinges and his jaw was just hinged if you will they put it back together on the sideline that's how tough he is he came back and played the game you talk about a tough character fifth year senior didn't want to be out of this game last regular season game as a fifth year senior for Thompson third down and a long seven and the crowd comes to life with a Spartan defense that's showing blitz Thompson in a hurry Incomplete. Penn State's got to kick it away again. Thomas Wright. Spartans had good pressure that time and made him throw out of a out of a hole. Had a lot of defensive linemen around him with their hands up. Even if he caught it, he wouldn't have made the first down. So Gary Scott goes back in punt return formation. David Royer to kick. Another nice kick by Royer. Scott may have a chance, though, from the 33. Where he's got a 10-yard return on the punt. And it's going to be the Spartans right back in business. Leading 7-0 on their home field, looking for their ninth win of the season. And looking to go unbeaten at home for the first time since 1966. They took the opening kick return for 51 yards and then gave it to their freshman, T.J. Duckett. We went 20 yards bursting up the middle. That's the only score we have so far. Michigan State 7 and Penn State nothing. Penn State has mustered very little on either side of the ball, defensively or on offense for Joe Fox. Spartans have had great field position so far in the first quarter. Burke on first down. Throws too far in front of Plaxico Burris incomplete. And Burke's been a little bit high and long on his last couple of throws. It's a good thing he was wide on that one because Mac Morrison, the linebacker, is flying out there underneath. Bill started four for four and has missed his last three now. Second down at 10. And still no LeVar Arrington. Two tight ends set on the counter. Push it. Clemens get hit by Courtney Brown. You know, different coaches have different ways of dealing with injuries. Some of them will be honest and open with you and tell the press at the beginning of the week about a guy, and others will, will conceal it, uh, like uh, like Joe likes to do. Bill Snyder at Kansas State, uh, Hayden Fry for years and years at Iowa, the many coaches who just do not try to give the opposition an advantage, nor do they really care what the media thinks about them right. not telling. Right. It helps the, uh, helps the opposition prepare, but you know, in the NFL, you have to disclose all of the injuries right. so everybody knows everything, and then it's an even, even playing field. Ron Graham, the guy running around, getting in position out on the slot, 
to the near side is the man taking the What's line that? spot in the lineup. And they're kicking on him right now, but they overshot the intended receiver. Graham was way out of position, but Burke was high intended for Hager, and Penn State will get it back. The Spartans will have to kick. Graham is a good linebacker. He's going to be an outstanding player, and next year when they lose both Brandon Short and Matt Morrison, uh, he'll step in and play. Hey, what, that's not a matchup they want, though, him playing out there in the wide receiver. No way. Garrett to punt. Bruce Branch waiting on it. Try to keep it away from him, I'm sure. Line drive kick, though, they can't. He's going to feel this at the 25 and go down at the 25. Nice coverage. Demario Suggs got down there to make the hit. 31-yard punt and no return. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler, giving you back the romance of driving. BASF, we don't make a lot of products you buy. We make a lot of products you buy better. Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football, and inspired technology with a human touch. Nokia, connecting people. As Sparty stands almost 11 feet tall here on this guy looks like you. I saw you getting out of the pool at the hotel. You know your upper body? <laughs> yeah, it looks just like me. <laughs> First down at the 26. Maybe that was Lynn. I, yeah, I don't think it was me. Here's the toss. And Kenny Watson takes it up near the 34-yard line. Let's check the Dell Game Solutions going the other way, Bob. Well, for Penn State, they've got to throw the football to win. Michigan State's number two in the nation against the run. Penn State's got to throw. For Michigan State defensively, the front seven has to control the line of scrimmage. So far, they have done that. Yep, they have. A pick up a three on the carry by Watson. It's second down and seven. Play action for Thompson. In trouble in the pocket. And now scrambles out of it and got what he could and did pick up a couple of yards. Josh Shaw drags him down from behind. It'll bring up a third down situation at about three. You know, this Michigan State defense, when you're a quarterback, sit back in the pocket, and you, everything's fine, and you're, you're clear thinking. But then when, when somebody breaks in there and you start scrambling, look at the jerseys, the same color as the turf. You, <laughs> you kind of get, get them lost. You know, they kind of go, they, the color kind of blends with the field, and they just, you don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> There's yeah. numbers in green all over the place. It's an unfair advantage, that's right. It's white and green everywhere. Some of it's moving, some of it's not. Third down at three. McCoo had to avoid one guy in the backfield and couldn't avoid the second. Boo Boo Thompson made the hit, but it was Julian Peterson who forced him out of where he wanted to run. He was going to try and pick this ball back to the wide receiver a couple of times, but Peterson got upfield so quickly that uh, that plan was uh, aborted. Watch this. He looks like he's going to pitch it. He was going to try to get it to Sam Crenshaw. Yeah. You're exactly right. Royal to punt. End over end kick. Gary Scott from the 37. Scott in the open field. He's got a corner to beat. And he's got him. Gary Scott. Touchdown, Spartan. He was their punt return leader all time, and he just went over a thousand yards in punt return. Perk and 63 of it for a touchdown on that one. Paul Edinger in for the point after. All Spartans here in the first 12 minutes. It's the special teams that have let Penn State down and have set the tone for this game early for the Spartans. First the opening kickoff and a long punt return, a kickoff return. Now the punt return for a touchdown by Gary Scott. Right up the middle. Both returns right up the middle. He was never touched. That is a splashy way to go over a thousand yards in punt return for your career. Huh? 14 to nothing. A senior playing his final game here at home. Yep. And Brad, I just want to throw in one more point. We talked about Levi Arrington. Normally, he is on that special teams unit. That's a good point, Swanee. You're right. 
you got to wonder if they need a field goal block sometime today if number 11 is not in there. Now, I don't think he's going to go in there for a field goal block if he's not on the defense. He's trying to do what he can to fire up his teammates. They are in a two-touchdown hole right now. And you know, Brad, sometimes when your star player doesn't play, it kind of sends a message to the rest of the team. Now, I don't know how bad his shoulder is or how severe it is. But if, but if, but it sends a message, you know, sometimes it sends a negative message. Sometimes it's positive, but so far it's been a negative sign. Kenny Watson from the five. Oh. And did he get hammered by Sean Wright on the special teams as he got it out to the 22-yard line? Michigan State started their season, remember, 6-0. and oh, And then they dropped two straight and... Nick Saban said we maybe got a little bit too big for our britches. Our whole focus was always on being relentless competitors, uh, you know, trying to dominate the other team. Don't worry about the scoreboard. And all of a sudden, when you're six and zero, you start worrying about being nine and zero, uh, and you lose the focus on what got you to play. And the victories were a byproduct of the way you played, and you lose sight of that. They haven't lost sight of anything so far today. They're looking for their ninth win, and they're playing up a storm. Mike Austin, the linebacker, makes that hit. This is an inspired Michigan State team, and their bridges are fitting just fine today. Penn State has started each possession inside their own 30-yard line with three possessions and three putts. Somebody's got to step up and make a play offensively for Penn State to get this momentum switched around. They switch their backfield again. They fake the toss, and now Thompson's going deep. And just overshot, no flag. There was a little bump down there. Sam Crenshaw, the intended receiver. And Amp Campbell got tangled up with him, I thought, right at the end of that play. Well, Amp Campbell has broken up more passes for Michigan State than any other defensive back. He's been around for six years he's had some injuries and the younger players affectionately call him grandpa <laughs> grandpa soup they call him grandpa soup <laughs> what a kid he is he's a good guy seven career interceptions and of course i think most of you know the story about breaking his neck early last season wondering whether he would even walk much less ever play football again that's a great story yes it is third down and long penn state trailing by 14. Thompson over the middle to his tight end, but it's not going to be nearly enough for the first down. He's all wrapped up by Hubert Thompson. And Thompson now will shove a match with the tight end, John Gilmore. The officials get him separated, and Penn State, another three and out. Penn State, to me, looks like just what they thought they were coming in, a physically down, a worn down team, physically and mentally, both ways. 75 yards on two returns and an electrifying 63-yarder for a score the last time he touched it. You know, Royer's thinking, I hope I can hang it up there and he can't do anything with it. Well, that's what he did, but he kicked it way out of bounds and the field position will be great anyway because they spot it at the 46-yard line. Coming up tomorrow, it's a rematch of the 1996 MLS inaugural championship game. Eddie Pope and D.C. United look to win their third championship in four years. They'll take out the L.A. Galaxy. MLS Cup 99 tomorrow live, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific on ABC Sports from Foxborough. Brad Nessler, Bob Griefing, Lynn Swan at Spartan Stadium with 2.10 left first quarter. All Michigan State so far. First play action throw high and almost intercepted by Macklin he would have been off for a touchdown that's the second interception that Penn State has had an opportunity Sandusky knows that either one of them Boju the first one Macklin the second one somebody has got to make a play for this Penn State team that has come in after suffering two losses two tough losses at home by a total of five points. The only thing I can think of for Macklin is he was blocked out by the tight end and never saw the ball until it hit him in the hand. Well, that could happen. He's only 5'7". <laughs> tight end is 6'5". That's right. Second down of 10 on the 46. Baker, the tight end in motion. Burke throws on the run, and again it skips off the hands of Macklin. 
Burke got dumped pretty well after he let go of that by Brain and Short. That's six straight incompletions for Bill Burke. Brandon Short is the leader. Not only is the leader, but he leads the team in tackles. 43, quarterback rolls out, high pressure. One of the Butkus finalists with his teammate, LeVar Arrington, as well as Ray Knott Thompson of Tennessee and Mark Simino, who we saw last week at Kansas State. That's a pretty good group. Yeah, what is that? The first time that two linebackers from the same school, yep. and what better? The, they call it the linebacker U, Penn State? One of them not in there, though, due to injury. Burke in trouble. Courtney Brown chasing. He gets it away, though, and throws it out of bounds. And it'll be fourth down. And when that guy's chasing you, you want to run either really fast or get rid of the football. Well, I'll tell you what. Billy Burke made a nice move. Here he is right here. Number 86. He stepped up and then got around the guy from the other side and then just throws it away. This is a fourth straight three and out, two by each team now. And Jarrett's got a punt again. This time you would think Branch may get a shot at one. Well, he's got a lot of bounce, and boy, that's going to cost him a whole chunk of real estate. And that's a lot of pitch to Yep, all the way down to the seven-yard line. 47-yard kick and no return. Coming up Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific time. ABC Sports kicks off your Thanksgiving weekend with a college football doubleheader. First, it's Major Applewhite and company. Their game with Texas A&M, and then we'll have Eric Crouch. And fourth rank, Nebraska against Colorado. That's our twin bill coming up Friday for you. Grab your leftovers. Those two games are anything but leftovers. <laughs> First down, Penn State, and again, horrible field position from their own seven. The special teams have, have contributed to, special, to the field position in the first quarter here. Look like motion on the left side by McKenzie, the left tackle, I thought came out of his stance. Let's see if it's again Penn State. If it is, they're going to be buried down near their own two-yard line. And Joe just said, come on, boys. <laughs> Their field position, as Bob was just talking about, their own 16 is their average, and, and Michigan State around midfield. The direct relationship to the opening kickoff when the Michigan State took about 51 yards in the opening kickoff. So a great kick return by Michigan State and an even better punt return by Gary Scott, and that's basically what we have right now, 14 to nothing. Will they back? The line of scrimmage up inside the four. First down and 13. Larry Johnson, the tailback, three yards deep in his own end zone. He gets the call, trying to find the corner, and doesn't. He finds the turf, courtesy of Josh Thornhill, the outside linebacker. Defensively, get off the box, linebackers scrape, Thornhill does a nice job to the outside. Well, these two going to have to put one up out of their own end zone, it might be right here, second down and 13. Thompson will throw from the end zone, Watson, or Johnson rather, makes the catch, and he's hammered by Ant Campbell. This is a nice uh, defensive effort by Michigan State. And Campbell, number three, jams him and then looks to the inside. That's a nice job by Campbell. One of the things that Michigan State wanted to do to these two wide receivers for the, for, uh, for the Lions is get up and jam them at the line of scrimmage. Don't let them get off the line of scrimmage. That time, Campbell did a nice job of jamming and vision in the backfield. Quick pass, throw out the Shoffy Field. Michigan State. Penn State's not in this game. Offensively, they're not ready to play. You can see it in their eyes. Ronaldo Hill. 
recovered it. And Josh Thornhill, I think, is the guy that made the hit. Chalky Field hurt his leg or hip or something early in the game. And he's not moving like he normally moves. Eric Morris forced that fumble. Hit him right in the backside. And then the troops got there to recover. And Ronaldo Hill scoops it. Sets up Michigan State now at the Penn State 9. First and goal. Now Brad has a wide receiver. When you've got a little injury like that to your leg, you try and put it out of your mind, but it's obvious the shot we can't. It stays with you and it breaks your concentration. And that's what he lost when he lost that football. Good point. Duckett, the single setback with a tight end in motion. And it's TJ. Last time he went straight up the middle. This time he goes straight down at the line of scrimmage, courtesy of Brandon Short and Mac Morrison. And the first quarter has belonged to the Spartans. 14 to nothing, Michigan State. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. Freshman's in the end zone for the second time today. What you're seeing is a team on a roll versus a team that has nothing to play for. Right here, behind the defense. Morrison is 31. Boyd is six. Duncan just outruns him to the corner. Gary Scott got a nice block out there to help seal it. Ellinger's point after is up and right through the middle. This is domination by the guys in green right now. That's two years ago, right here on this field, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, this was a blowout. The Spartans blew out the Nittany Lions, and there's no question that they remember that. Both teams do. So one play into the second quarter, 21 to nothing, Michigan State. Remember, that followed Shoffy Fields fumble down deep. So they only had to go nine yards in two plays. And boy, does Joe Paterno need a spark somewhere from his team. Yeah. They're a tired, battered, beat up football team, Penn State. They started out with high expectations, as I mentioned earlier. 18 starters returned, preseason number one. They went through the first nine games, not unscathed, but they were close on a few of them. Then they lose one at home, another one at home, and now they go on the road to Michigan State, where it's always tough to play. And they're, they're playing like a tired football team. You didn't see the beginning of the game. Remember, they lost in the final play to Minnesota, and they gave up two touchdowns in the last five minutes to lose to Michigan last week, and now they're down four one to nothing. And Kelly Watson takes it out. Across the 30 to the 31 yard line. The game summary of this one. The kick return will open things up. And then PJ Duckett went 20 yards to cap the first scoring drive for the Spartans. Gary Scott from his own 37 on the punt. And he said goodbye. 63 yards for a touchdown. And then moments ago, PJ Duckett, second touchdown. And then this one from nine yards out. And it's 21 to nothing, Michigan State. And here comes what. Joe Paterno hopes is the spark his backup quarterback Rashad Casey in at the controls now. Crenshaw in motion on the first half. McCool hit in the backfield and no gain on the play. Julian Peterson, he is their big play guy, and he will be now the guy that will basically be Richard Casey's shadow. He was a defensive end, Peterson, last year. They moved him to linebacker. Still plays down on the defensive line in pass rush situation. Second down and 10. From behind the Nittany Lions, Harris in there is a single setback as Casey wants to throw the slant and had it batted down. I think it might have been Boo Boo Thompson that got a paw up there to knock that thing away. Peterson on the right side, number 98. He sees it coming, times his leap. I don't know if it was he or if it was Thompson. Could have been Thompson or 
Peterson, but both of them, 98 and 89. He had four arms up there. It's kind of hard to throw around it. Well, thrown through jail bars. <laughs> and it's third and ten. Here comes the blitz. Slide down over the middle. Oh, what a hit by Morris. Fumble. And they're going to say incomplete. Eric Morris just leveled Sam Crenshaw. Now with Michigan State offside on the blitz. That may be the call coming up. And that is the case. They jumped in there in the neutral zone. Try to bring the blitz. Watch this hit by Eric Morris go after it. Number nine. He'll put a lick on you. Thorpe Award semifinalist coming in has 331 career tackles. And he put the strong in strong safety. Now, four of the six third down situations for Penn State have been for 10 yards or more. They're not, only, not what you want. No, nope, they were only two for 14 on third down conversions last week. Third and five for Casey. Over the middle, wide open. They got this first down to Andy Drummond. And Drummond's out near midfield. Good oh, play. Hill made the tackle. Good play, good execution. Shore does a nice job of sitting back and, and making a big play happen. Here's Drummond over here. He's just going to come right here, and the pass is not going to be a difficult one. You just have to throw it between all those tall timbers. And he gets it through, and you pick up a first down. And yeah, Drummond with the best speed on the Penn State team gets it out. Yeah. Get her bugs his way to midfield. Little things, just little things to get the offense going. Casey, off play action, pump fakes, and now here he goes. He'll tuck it, got a block from Saramelli, tiptoes out of bounds near the 41 yard line, about a yard short of another first down. Rashard's not going to stand back there and think about three different receivers, yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, and he probably ejects from the pocket too soon. I mean, you, you don't want to stand there too long. All right, you see, first receiver's covered. We had to eject. There was alignment in the pocket. Good decision. You know, the number one thing that the quarterback has to do is make good decisions. The second thing he has to do is be a playmaker. And then all that other stuff comes in about accuracy and arm strength and intelligence. Saramelli, the fullback for the first down, got about three. Bob, you know, I agree with you about Casey. He's got to make real good decisions for this team to have an impact in the ball game. But I think this is also the kind of game that a quarterback of his skills can take charge of. Dropping back, seeing where there's an opening, making the run, making a big play, helping to sustain the drive. Very much the way like an option quarterback does running the football. A lot of defenses, too, and as you know, have different schemes against Penn State's two different um, quarterbacks. He's got them down in Michigan State territory. There's a naked boot. He'll take off with it. Down the sideline is Casey inside the 20 and down to the three-yard line. Exactly what Swanee and Bob were just talking about. And Casey just streaks down Casey the sideline with the first and goal Penn State. State. Most of the time, they want to contain him. Watch the end here. Now watch the end. He's going to go this way. The fake and the pitch is going to go that way. And Casey's just going to turn and keep running. Look to the bottom of your screen. If you can stop it right here. Look at all the defense. They're on this side of the ball. And he's just going to have a free run down the sideline. That's exactly what Lynn was just talking about. Injecting something into the game that the other quarterback doesn't possess. First and goal, Nittany Lions at the Spartans. Three-yard line. Saramelli, the fullback. Not that time. Got it inside the two. Josh Shaw holding on for dear life. Helps out on the tackle, along with Thornhill. It'll be second and goal. They're going to spot it down about a yard and a half away, I think, once they get done wiping the ball off. 21 touchdowns and 11 field goals in their 32 scores this year in the red zone. Larry Johnson is the tailback. Casey will send his tight end in motion. Penn State in for the touchdown. 
Nice drive there, Rashard. Casey comes in and puts some offense in that, uh, that offensive unit. Larry Johnson. Little over a yard out. Pulls his way in the left side for the touchdown. Nice to see Kevin Thompson, the first guy to greet Richard when he comes off. Yep. Just a friendly rivalry, not a controversy, just a rivalry at quarterback. Travis Foley for the extra point. And it's good. So that quiet. The 77,000 momentarily. Penn State try to inch their way back in the game. Our Aflac trivia question this week. Who was the last team to beat Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State in the same season? We'll be back with the answer for you coming up in a few minutes. That's something that Penn State is trying to to avoid and Michigan State's trying to accomplish here today and there you see the two quarterbacks talking things over on the sideline as Rashard Casey sparked that 70-yard touchdown march in just eight plays took them under three minutes to get on the board nice drive Herb Hagen from two yards deep he had a 51 yard to open the game and this time he's gonna have to struggle to make it a play but now he reverses his field across the 25 and a nifty return to the 34, maybe the 35 yard line. I thought he was dead in the water at the 15. The difference in this game has been the return for Hager and Gary Scott returning a couple of kickoffs in good shape and then the pump return that went for the touchdown. So again, the Spartans have beautiful spot to work from. Yeah, 100, excuse me, Brad, 161 yards in return yardage for Michigan State. That's one of those things that doesn't show up on the total yards when you look in the paper tomorrow morning. You say, how the heck did they have a 21-7 lead? Yeah. Baker, the tight end in motion. It gets to Clemens, and he's dropped in the backfield. And Brandon Short gets in there to make the stop. Coming up next Saturday, interstate rivals go head to head on ABC. So you'll see Heisman Kenneth, Joe Hamilton, and the Yellow Jackets take out the Georgia Bulldogs. Running back from Canada and Arizona's Wildcats will take on the Sun Devils of Arizona State next Saturday, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 Pacific on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Call your local cable operator, direct TV, or dish network for all the games on pay-per-view. Loss of a couple. Second down and a long 12 coming up for Michigan State. Dilbert in trouble in the pocket and down he goes. And back-to-back -back nice defensive plays by Penn State this time. Fleischauer and Matt Morrison with the sack. And it'll be third down and long. To look at John Sandusky, fifth year senior, son of Jerry Sandusky, who is Coach, here's last week. They introduced Jerry Sandusky in his last home game, 32 years an assistant coach, and he was met by his defensive staff and some of his players. Very emotional moment. And he finally gets over and finds John Sandusky, his son. That's when the tears started to pour. Yeah, what's this? What's good? Yep. That's, that's, that's nice. Third down, batted in the air, incomplete. Brian Scott coming on a blitz, knocked that one away. So not only does Penn State get a little bit of a lift by their offense, their defense comes to play and forces a punt. Passing game hasn't been too swift for Michigan State really since early. One of the things that a quarterback has to do is get the ball past the hands and the arms of the defensive lineman occasionally. Remember Bruce Branch last week, a touchdown against Michigan changed the complexion of that game. He'd love to have another shot right here to do that. Great punt, though. Wow. Branch over his shoulder from the 22. Broke a tackle. And got out to about the 31-yard line. So the Spartans have the lead, but Penn State and Rashard Casey have the ball when we come back. Remember, we asked you the Aflac trivia question the last time a team beat Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State in the same season. We gave you time to think about it. Duffy's boys, the Spartans of 1965 here in Michigan State. Boy, today have some players like Bubba Smith. Went on to an all-pro career in the NFL. So did George Webster as a great linebacker here, and then with the Houston Oilers. 
had Clint Jones and Gene Washington on offense. My partner's over here cringing just looking at those two guys. <laughs> they make me sick. <laughs> Every time I see them, I get nauseous. <laughs> First down from the 30 for Penn State. They've cut the lead to two touchdowns. Casey on a toss to McCoo. Looking for his blockers. And he only got about a yard. DJ Turner, the linebacker, got over there to make the hit. Four carries for McCoo and only one yard to show for it. But they've already rushed for 72 yards this week versus last week against Michigan. They didn't get more, well, really, a seven yard, did they? Bad news is Casey's got 44. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, right. he takes the win. That's, really, that's what we'll do. It's like Georgia Tech. They're seventh in the country in rushing, and they don't have a running back with over 700 yards. It's because Joe Hamilton has some. Yeah. Second down and nine. It takes the toss through. Casey's in trouble. Almost threw it yeah. into the defensive lineman's hand. As good as as good as Casey was on the last drive, that play was just as bad because he made a bad decision. Little toss to the right side. Now he's going to come back out, try to hit the tight end, and it's a bad decision. He almost had it picked off. You just have to have the experience when the play blows up. Don't make it work. He ran right into a safety blitz from Richard Newsom. That didn't help. But now it forces third and nine. Buttons is showing blitz again on third and long. Let's see if they bring it. They do. Casey flushed to his right. Finally throws and behind Drummond incomplete. Bashar did a nice job of buying some time. And Drummond was open, he just didn't connect. Here's a look from behind the defense. Bashar, the right-hander, goes to his right side. Yeah, he really wasn't open by a lot. Huh? Fourth it time, it's been three and out in seven possessions for Penn State. Here's the kick, Gary Scott. From the 28. And he got by the first wave again. Got across the 40. And a diving tackle made there by Maurice Daniels. Good field position again, though, for the Spartans when we come back. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan back in Spartan Stadium with 8.59 to go and a half, 21 to 7 in this one. We're going to talk a little bit about the Big Ten and who won and who lost today and maybe who should be coach of the year in the Big Ten yeah. after this snap, all right? From the 43-yard line. Spartans with a couple of touchdown runs by T.J. Duckett and a punt return by Gary Scott for a score. And they lead 21-7. to And here comes Duckett again. He's alone and he's off to the races. Inside the 30, down the sideline. Didn't quite get there. Pumped out of bounds, saving a touchdown, or he would have had his third of the day. T.J. Duncan, as I mentioned, a true freshman, is huge. He's about uh, 250 pounds per block. He possesses good speed. Boy, number six has an angle. This is the second nice run for Duncan today. 55-yarder, a career long for the big fella. And he may be the guy that takes over the reins from Ron Dane as the big threat with a big body in the Big Ten in years to come. He stays in there as the tailback on first and goal. Here's the talk to him. Touch outside, touchdown. And as you heard from the PA announcer, another TJ TD. Just took any Penn State woman right out of the stadium, didn't it? And you, and you can just see that there's not a lot of resistance in Penn State defensively. I think they're really, really battered and, and worn out physically, and I think they're really down mentally. Avenger for the point after. And he's got it up and good. 28 to 7, 98 yards on just seven carries and three touchdowns. Buckets. Offensive line does a nice job. Sakura, the left guard, getting out and around. And the big back just uh, says, I'm going in. 
And Nick Saban looking for his ninth win of the year. Minnesota came from behind today to win. Purdue a winner as well. And you start looking around the Big Ten and you think, you know, who's going to be coach of the year? Well, there's a guy going to the Rose Bowl that's with us right now. He's, he's a candidate, I would say. Barry Alvarez joins us from Rochester, Minnesota, where surgery performed, uh, putting in a new knee. Coach, how you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Just, uh, Went through some rehab, had the surgery on on Tuesday, and uh, been going through uh, rehab twice a day. It's kind of nice to be finished and have the season over and sitting back and watch, isn't oh, it? It is, Bob. You sit back and you really, uh, how anybody plays doesn't make any difference to you other than the Stanford game, I guess. Uh, that's the only one that would affect us, and that's just who we would play. So it's kind of enjoyable just to sit back here and watch everybody other, everybody else sweat and, and uh, grind through a game. <laughs> Barry, you had such a strange season and that uh, the majority of it was spent from our vantage point, I guess, up in the press box and uh, kind of a different year. It was, but you know what? Um, yeah, I was severe enough that I knew that we had to do that, so we just tried to make the best of it. Larry Johnson on the return here, cuts outside and gets a nice return after about the 34-yard line. I mentioned Barry... Uh, a couple of seconds ago when Duckett took it in, the new big back in the Big Ten. But you've had the big back in the Big Ten, and we're looking back right now at the scene last week at Camp Randall Stadium. Tell us about it. Well, that, that may have been as, as great a day. I know it was as great a day as there ever has been in Wisconsin history. And I don't know if you could have scripted it any better. Uh, with us clinching the Rose Bowl, winning an outright title, Ron breaking the record, the type of run that he broke it on, and just the spontaneity of the, of the people in the stands. It was just, just a wonderful night. First down here, Penn State from their own 34. Casey comes up throwing, complete, and a short game to the tight end. You know, Barry, in typical, I guess, Ron Dane fashion, the most understated young man maybe that we've been around in a long time, uh, just kind of goes to the microphone and says, thank you, I love you. Oh, that's it. <laughs> he didn't have anything else to say. He, he said it all out on the field, and I think that's what he's done for the last four years. Uh, Coach, the, the Big Ten is competitive this year as, as uh, any time you've been in it, I guess. We're looking at Ron's numbers right now, and uh, I know you feel he deserves the Heisman Trophy. I really do. No one's done any more for a program, been more effective uh, over a long period of time, had a great year, led us again this year. We've written him, we've written him for four years our, as an offense and as a team. I kidded you the last time we got together and said, you know, it almost looks like you scripted this thing so he could break the record at home. I don't think you're that smart, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not that smart, but I did want to do it. I uh, wanted to break that record with integrity. Uh, we, we certainly could have padded that record and, and got it much earlier, but I wanted him to break it uh, and do it within the context of the game, and we did it the right way, and we got the record. Barry, you're in the BC, I said, in the Rose Bowl. Um, you know, when you talk about the Big Ten right now, it's really everybody beating everybody else up. Maybe it's, maybe it's too good a conference. Well, it's, it's, I said going in, you mentioned this already, Ness, I thought it was the best I've, I've seen. I've been in the league since 79, uh, and I would be very surprised if we don't have at least two teams in it. As Thornhill comes up with a sack, and he's playing like a man possession like his daddy did, the Mad Dog back here in the 60s, and it forces Penn State to give it up again. Are you surprised, Bear, at all at, uh, uh, at Penn State today? Well, you know, Penn State's had a tough run here for three weeks. We've all known, we, we've seen Michigan State play like this before. This kind of reminds us when we, you know, reminds me of when we played Michigan State. They've come through a, a couple, a, a tough ball game emotionally. They weren't quite ready, and our, our kids were cranked up, and, and you had this type of tempo. So they're very talented and very skilled. Nothing that would have happened in this game would surprise me. Barry, what do you think uh, about the coaches in the league? It seems to me like the Big Ten may have the best group of coaches any of any conference in the country. Well, I'm biased, but I'd have to agree. And you look at the new coaches. Look at the guys that came into the league, uh, what, three years ago. All took programs that were that were run down, and three of them uh, will be in bowl games this year. And, of course, Joe took his, his crew uh, the first year he was in the league, I believe. But Illinois, what a great job that, that they've done. And Glenn's done a great job at Minnesota. And, and, and uh, Cam uh, is right there at, at Indiana. So, um, you know, it, it is a tough league to, top to bottom. And you've got to be able to play and be ready to play every week. At the 24-yard line, first down, Michigan State. And to give up the middle, Mark Clemens. Clemens, nice run, about eight yards. And then, Barry, everybody in the Big Ten lost at least two games in a row this year. Yeah. I was just trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out when we did, but I guess we did, too. You did. You did yeah, Cincinnati sure and did. Michigan, right? The only, the, only, the only thing about your two losses, Barry, one of them was a non-conference game. Right. And all the other ones in the conference uh, were uh, teams were conference teams. Right. And, you know, our league... It's so physical. 
it's so hard. I was concerned all year. We went 11 straight weeks. I was concerned that we'd get beat up. We were fortunate that we were able to stay relatively healthy all year. Second down and two. Lex Cummins from Penn State. And first down run for Lloyd Clemens out to the 35-yard line. Barry, we know you have a rehab ahead of you and a Rose Bowl ahead of you, and we wish you the very best in both, and uh, good to talk to you. And Barry, I want to be the first one to get you on the tennis court. <laughs> Bob, you wouldn't have had any problem before the surgery. <laughs> All right, Thanks, guys. Thanks, good luck. You have a good day. Barry Alvarez with us from his hospital room in Rochester, Minnesota. And the knee surgery successful. And uh, every, all the parts fit right is what he told us the other day. So just a matter of rehabbing now and hoping to be on the sideline in Pasadena instead of the press box. And we wish uh, the Badgers the best in that bowl game. Try to be back-to-back -back winners in the Rose Bowl from the Big Ten. Burke throws out Clemens on a screen pass with a couple of blockers in front. And Lloyd gets it out to the 43-yard line. Good-looking play. Pickup of eight. And we pick up John Saunders from New York, John. Brad Stanford still trying to clinch this thing in the Pac-10. Todd Husak, 36 yards to Dave Davis. Almost underthrown, but a nice catch to the end zone for the touchdown. 21 to 13 is the lead. Stanford trying to close it up. Brad, back to you. So the game has some meaning this year, and that would be the opponent for Coach Alvarez and the Badgers if they can win it. We'll keep you posted on that one here. It's 28 to 7. Michigan State. Clemens spins his way to the 45. I think he's going to be short of the first down, though, by a couple of feet. Ron Graham, the in for LeVar Arrington today, makes the tackle. And there's LeVar on the sideline, and maybe that's the closest he's going to get to the ball today. Yeah, if you just joined us, a uh, shoulder injury uh, that happened in last week's game is what is keeping him from playing uh, in this afternoon's ballgame. He did get the first down. Well, he was going to be short. Wow, Virginia Tech spotted Temple 7 and then scored 62 in a row. I think they're trying to make a statement. Yes, I think they are. Alabama and Auburn, that has ramifications as far as the SEC championship and possibly the BCS as well tonight. That's on ESPN, by the way. And Kansas State bouncing back after getting throttled by the Rockets. Okay. the make first throw. Quite able to hold on as Gary Scott. Wake Forest trying to upset Georgia Tech. Holy cow. He's going to have a curl. It's a simple curl route here. Now watch as Bill Burke is going to go back. He's going to have a clear shot for him. Stop it right here if you can. There's, a, there's an opening right here to throw the football, and he throws it a little bit to the outside. <laughs> Linebacker may have been in the line of sight there. You know. Might be that rib problem or that pack muscle too. Yeah, that's true. He started four for four, but it's a good four for There's a big hit by Courtney Brown in the backfield on TJ Duckett. Another tackle for loss by number 86. Is he a special defensive end or what? Oh, he is special. There ain't no question about it. Number 86? Oh, come on now. There you go. Courtney's good, but somebody's got to block him. That's you got to lay, lay a hand on him. Come on. Courtney's got to be smiling. <laughs> That's the easiest uh, play he's had in all day. Well, he's literally put his hometown on the map. Alvin, South Carolina. He and Joe Hamilton played high school ball in together. And the governor, Jim Hodges of South Carolina, says when the new maps come out, Alvin's on the map. Here's Gary Scott, and he's on the map down to the 44-yard line first down. Scott Sandusky made the hit, but it's a pickup for 12 on a third and 11. Take a look from behind the defense. It's the first completion he's had for a while, Sandusky. A fifth-year senior, and as we mentioned, the center coordinator, John Sandusky, playing in his last regular season game. Well, that moves it to the 44-yard line now. We've only had 340 left in the half. Boy, Michigan State tacks on more points before halftime and can almost turn off the portable lights in this place. <laughs> Here's the give to Dewan Moss, the fullback. Got a yard, maybe two. Anthony Adams made the tackle. You mentioned, you mentioned Courtney Brown and Joe Hamilton going to the same high school. You know, they, they didn't win the uh, state championship no, in football. Win. 
but they, they did basketball. basketball. That's right. <laughs> Joe is the point guard on that one. <laughs> Courtney, he's up for just about every defensive award you can be up for, yeah. including the Lombardi. 12 and a half sacks coming in, the tackles for loss. We saw the interception for a touchdown against Purdue. He's forced three fumbles. Yeah, well, he got my vote for the Lombardi. There ain't no doubt about that. Yeah. He's up for the Nagurski, the Bednarik, uh, just about every defensive player award you could possibly talk about. Second down, Burt Long throw on the out pad and intended for Gary Scott incomplete. And it's going to bring up third down and long. Burke now is um, 6 of 16, 63 yards. And that's after a 4 for 4 start, remember? Yeah. So he's completed two of his last 12. Yep. One out of five on third down situations, and he's going to have to earn this one because it's third and about nine. You know, his shoulder may be hurting him. In fact, he took himself out of last week's game. But when you're having fun and you're up 28 to yeah. 7, nobody wants to come out. <laughs> That's true. Richardson in motion. This will be Burke from the shotgun. Over the middle, got Richardson first down. And that time he threw a strike. Yeah, nice call and well-designed play. Got a penalty marker down in the backfield, a holding call. We have had very few penalties today. And this holding call is going to negate that pass and that first down. I think it may have been Greg Robinson Randall who was the guilty party. He was the closest to the flag anyway. I think the official did say 76. Let's check in with Swanick. Brad, I've been watching this game, and what I'm surprised is, is that number four, Fox Burris, hasn't caught a pass yet. He's been moving down the field pretty well. He's been open a number of times, especially the deep crossing route. That last pass, Brad, and he got pushed down physically by the defensive back. He almost destroyed the pass play. He almost got pushed out into his fellow receiver. Uh, but he is a very talented young man, and I'm just surprised that they have not found a way to get him the ball yet. They've thrown a couple his way, but both have been high and wide and nowhere near being able to be caught by number four. Swanee, I, I would think that he's got to be anxious to catch one, wouldn't you? Oh, he's, he's very anxious. I mean, he, he wants it all the time. He wants to be a part of this. He goes out to meet David Macklin on a third down of 19. Here they come. Deep middle. Had his tight end open, and Ivory McCoy couldn't quite turn around and find a handle. Boy, that one might have been a touchdown. Yeah, he, and he, and, and he could have hit him, and he should have hit him. I think that shoulder's bothered him. Here's a tight end. He's going to come right up the center of the field. The receivers are on the other side, right there, wide open. Just couldn't get him the ball. So Craig Jarrett to punt, no further damage done for Penn State, and Branch hoping to get his hands on one. Stands at the 20. I got to stand up for my quarterbacks. My man misses him that bad. I know he's hurt. Yeah, that's right. He's got to be hurt. Jarrett, over end kick. Branch comes up, tries to field it, and the ball came loose momentarily. He covers it, however. His, his old man ran into him. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Impala by Chevrolet. Let's go for a drive. Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. Valvoline, you can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. And Russell Athletic, made for the long run. The bells of Beaumont Towers, and the bells are ringing in Penn State's head right now. They're down 48 to seven. Kevin Thompson is back in at quarterback. The senior captain. Started the game, gave way to Rashard Casey, who led on their only touchdown drive. Here's Aaron Harris, out of draw play. And he's weaving his way through traffic, and now he's in the secondary and out to the 38, not, maybe the 39-yard line. Harris was such a heck of a good back before the knee injury has taken a little bit of that away, but that was a good-looking run. He was an outstanding freshman a couple of years back, had the knee injury, and his, really never, never got back to where he was. He got 15 on that carry. Penn State without a huddle. And Thompson to his tight end. Out to the 49. Tony Stewart made the catch. Could be close enough to measure, although they're going to run up to the line and try to conserve some time. And there won't be any measurement. Yes, the referee says first down. They won't have to measure. Penn State in their two-minute offense. About a minute and 55 seconds to play here. This is where they'd love to have Shoppy Fields and Eddie Drummond out there. They don't have either one of them out there. Sam Crenshaw is to the near side. He got a crossing route and 
stopped and just missed him. Yeah, and, and, and he missed and Crenshaw. And I don't think he works as much on that route with Crenshaw as he does the other two. Don't forget at halftime of Alvaline Halftime Report, John and Terry will be along. All the scores and highlights from across the country. And, of course, that includes a Michigan win over Ohio State. They'll bring you up to date on the Florida, Florida State game. Wake Forest, the last time we saw, was shutting out Georgia Tech 20 to nothing. A lot of teams getting ready to maybe take it on the chin here in the final weeks of the regular season. Thompson in the pocket and down in the pocket. Second sack of the day, and Julian Peterson draped all over it. Kevin Thompson drops Peterson. That's his 11th sack of the year. Right of your side, right of the screen, he'll move to the inside. That's just a nice move. He fooled McKenzie. McKenzie, one of the best offensive linemen for the Lions. Peterson, 21 career sacks. He had a fumble return for a touchdown last year in this game. He's got 141 remaining in the half in a game dominated by the Spartans of Michigan State. They got the opening kick, a 51-yard return, and that set up T.J. Duckett from 20 yards out. It was 7 to nothing in the first two and a half minutes of this game, and Gary Scott, their senior co-captain, a 63-yard punt return for a score. That put Penn State in a hole. T.J. Duckett added to the hole. Three touchdowns for him today. Penn State's on the end zone only once so far this afternoon. And that's where we are at 28-7. Michigan State came into this game on a two-game winning streak, trying to win a ninth game for the first time since 1966 when their team won the national championship. Penn State, on the other hand, came into this game on a two-game losing streak. Not only had a two-game losing streak, but having known they lost a chance for the championship game yep, and, the Rose Bowl. and a chance at the Rose Bowl. And it's and they have not recovered from those two losses. Deflated of spirit and physically beaten up as well. And they're down 48 to 70. 141 left. They got a couple of timeouts left. Thompson. Pressure coming. Going deep. And Drummond broke his route off. The pass went down the near sideline incomplete. Ant Campbell was covering. Brad Bob, you know, we've covered this this Penn State team a while, and I agree with the coaches in having Kevin Thompson in there because he's a better of the two at running a two-minute drill. But the only downside of doing that is that Rashard Casey is a quarterback of the future. He's not getting any experience at this point of the game in the entire 1999 season. That's going to be something that's going to be detrimental to them when they begin the season next year. Here's a punt and flag down. Might have an illegal block on the short return. Well, there was a lot of people that thought that way at the end of last season, too. Swally, that uh, Casey wasn't getting enough time because he showed flashes of brilliance when he was out on the field. And then it was a quarterback battle and a two-quarterback system for a good part of the year. And that's kind of faded away a little bit in recent weeks for Joe Paterno. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying, Len. Uh, and look at, look at Ohio State this year with not getting Greg Belisari in last year to get some experience and so he can play. But, but on the other hand, I, I know Joe Paterno and I know you do too. And I think the fact that Kevin Thompson is a fifth year senior yep. playing his last regular season game is, is wearing on too because I'm seeing some of the substitutions I'm seeing for Penn State are guys that are fifth year seniors playing their last game. Exactly. First down, They're 10, playing. Michigan State, Wall of exactly. the Park. Burke stays in there at quarterback for Michigan State. And on the toss to Clement. Runs into Brandon Short first, and then gets knocked down at the 32-yard line. Lloyd Clemens, Lloyd's been a workhorse running back this year, and has carried it a ton of times. Six-year senior also, 300-yard rushing games, and still hasn't seen the end zone in 99. <laughs> yeah. They would love to. They've been teasing him for a couple of weeks about whether or not he'd ever get a touchdown, and of course, duck it. His replacement has three touchdowns today. But he takes a lot of grief from his teammates. <laughs> Duckett's back in there now. Second down and a long five. And this is blow too much time. As they take a look at the penalty. Dead ball. Delay again on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains 
second down. 37 seconds left. And second down upcoming for Michigan State. And those delay of games, they're not always the quarterback's fault for not getting the ball snapped within the 25 second clock. Sometimes the play, it takes too long to get the play, and here it comes right now. You only got nine seconds on the play clock to get this ball off. Gonna have to hustle. Richardson, the guy that ran the play in, and now there's motion. And Penn State saying they were drawn outside by Sean Mason, the right guard, who may have moved his hand or come out of his stance just a little bit. And David Fleischauer went flying in there. See, that, that whole series for, for Michigan State, that, that play series. Ball start. On the offense. Five five yards yards down. Not the player's fault on the field. The play got in there too early by the time. They had a delay of game, and then the play didn't get into the huddle until 10 seconds were left on the clock. They got to the line of scrimmage with five seconds. I think Nick Saban was nicely discussing that with somebody on the sideline yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. Get the play in. Five penalties against the Spartans, four on the offense. Morris Watt, the offensive coordinator. What a great job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great job. Morris yeah. has done since he came back to Michigan State. After being at LSU. Yep. Second and 15. Big hit by Ronnie Graham. And the clock under a half minute in the half. You know, Graham has done a nice job, and he was a highly regarded high school player coming in, and he'll probably be a starter next year. But there is no question that they missed LeVar Arrington. Yep. Some of these long runs would not have been long runs if Arrington would have been in there. And I think, as you said earlier, not only did they miss his physical presence, I think mentally when he didn't take the field and put a helmet on, everybody said, oh, no, we don't have number 11. Yeah, a little air, a little more air went out of the balloon. When you don't have Superman on the field, Metropolis is in danger sometimes. <laughs> and he has been a highlight package for the past couple years. Defensive player of the year in the Big Ten last season. And he has blocked a couple of field goals, hurdled would-be blockers. That one, we couldn't believe, against Purdue. Knocked down Drew Brees, scooped that one up and scored. He's been a human defensive highlight package this year, and today we haven't been able to see him except sitting over there on the yeah, sideline. Hopefully we'll see next year this Penn State defense loses eight seniors off of the starting lineup. Arrington is a junior, and there's a possibility, I guess, he may come out. And the end of an era with Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator, moving on. So this defense for Penn State is going to look a little bit different next year. Well, we have to be honest about it. Courtney Brown and Lamar Arrington, both if they're in the NFL draft, will both be in the top five picks. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And Pete Warren can be in there somewhere in the mix. Depends on who needs what. Third down and 15. And it's picked up by Duckett. Burke dropped it. Duckett scooped it. And Anthony Adams there to make sure it wasn't going any further. And we still got... 26 seconds left in the half. Penn State's going to get their hands back on the football. Now, there's no quit. And the, the effort is there by these uh, Penn State players. And, and we're not saying that. We're just saying they're battered and beat up and worn out mentally. Yep. And now time out taken by Penn State so they can think things over and get their punt return group out there. I'll say this. Wherever they go and whatever team they play in the bowl game, Look out, huh? I would not want to play <laughs> Penn State in a bowl game. That's a good point. They do very well once they recover. Coming up next Saturday, Spain's El Nino. Sergio Garcia competes in his first Skins game. He'll join Fred Couples, Mark O'Meara, and David Duvall in one of America's favorite Thanksgiving traditions, the Skins game. Thanksgiving weekend, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports. Garcia's got a new uh, caddy, I guess. Huh? He fired his caddy the other day. I don't think he's going to hire you. Is that your final answer? No, it's my final answer. Yeah, I'm not going to use a lifeline. <laughs> Penn State would like to right now. Not that much. Yes, they would. 13th punt of the football game. Craig Jarrett near his own five-yard line. Nice kick again. Wow. Rod Perry back pedal. He better scoop that thing up. Finally does, but it's at about the 13-yard line where he finally finds the handle, and then he's hammered out of bounds by Brad Rinko and Deron Bryant. 60 
seven yard punt. This thing looks like it hit cement. But it does. It, does. <laughs> it does. One of the things about uh, Michigan State, the two kickers are the two best in the league. Edinger and Jarrett are the two best kickers in the league. So that probably negated any chance for Penn State to try to do anything before halftime. Just 13 seconds left to take a knee and head to the locker room down by three touchdowns. All Michigan State in the half, 28 to 7. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Question was Penn State, how they're going to come into this yep. because they were devastated. The hopes were so high coming back uh, this season, and then they played well all year. The two big losses by five points total. Uh, you know, you lose them, and you really do. And they, and they know that they are out of the championship race, and they know they're out of the Rose Bowl race. You can't kid these kids. Yep. Michigan State playing like a team possessed, though. I know Swanee talked to both coaches uh, before this third quarter. Swanee? I certainly yeah. did. But I, I stopped Joe Paterno. I asked him about LeVar, and he told me, yes, it was a shoulder. Uh, he reiterated the fact that not having them in the ball game changes a great deal of what they wanted to do defensively. And then when I talked to Nick Saban, Nick seemed to be very upset that he didn't know that LeVar Arrington was not going to play in the ball game. He talked about the amount of time during the week that they've worked on and they prepared blocking schemes just for Arrington. He affects their protection. Uh, and so he was very disappointed that he didn't know that he wouldn't be in the ball game. And then Jerry Sandusky told me he really feels LeVar not being in there tremendously impacts the special teams, not having his presence there. So you see where well, you have a great player like LeVar Arrington, you don't know he's going to be in the ball game. He changes everybody's way of playing and thinking about the game. Yeah, and that special team situation, you're exactly right, Swanee, in that the long kick return, the punt return by Gary Scott for a touchdown, and the field position that has been all in green and white today, and I don't mean the stripes out there on the field, I mean the Spartans, who have had great starting field position. Penn State's been buried in their own end all day. About the only bright spot for the Nittany Lions is they get the ball first to start the third quarter. And Paul Edinger set the kick. Kelly Watson deep in the end zone, and again, they're going to have to work from the 20-yard line. As our Morgan Stanley Dean winner first half statistics look like this. There's that average starting field position, the 44-yard line. That's phenomenal. And the and return, return yards, yards for the uh, kickoff and the punt return, big in favor of uh, Michigan State. And remember, most of that rushing yardage for Penn State, who've been struggling on the ground, came from their quarterback. And as Bob said, get him however you can get him. But he's not in there right now. Kevin Thompson is at the control. 11th Penn State possession, or of 11 possessions, six of them at the 20 or worse. And this one starts at the 20 to start the third quarter. Kevin Thompson in the first half, behind the line of scrimmage, it's like a screen pass. The short intermediate range up to 15 yards. Mostly going into uh, the shorter range uh, passes, but uh, not a lot of work, not working for uh, Penn State in the first half. And they're grounding their tailback, McCoo, has three yards on five carries. That's far from the 206 he had last year against the Spartans. They take it to him. Thompson wants to go off top. In and out of the hands of Corey Jones. It would have been a tough catch. He got sandwiched back there as Richard Newsom put a hit on him. That's three drop passes by Penn State. Now this is a tough pass to complete to the right side. The receiver's gonna come to the inside and then break back to the outside. Richardson between two receivers and uh, ball a little bit behind him, but that, that could be caught, but that's, that's asking a lot. That's, he knew he was gonna get hit, and he did. Great help by Newsom over there with Amp Campbell. Third down and eight. Here comes the blitz. Thompson in trouble. Tries to run with it and only gets back to the line of scrimmage. Now, Thornhill is there. So is Josh Shaw. It's great defense. Seven of Penn State's 11 possessions. They have not made a first down. And credit that Spartan defense. Watch the pressure coming from the right side. Morris, number nine. Thornhill is 50. And they just run him down. 
We look behind Royer with Gary Scott waiting way down there on the other end. He's already had one punt return for a touchdown today. He might get to handle this one, too, from the 49. And into Penn State territory. Great field position again as Bill Burke and the offense will take over. And our ABC inside access behind the scenes or on the sidelines. This is he, Bill Burke, talking with his offensive coordinator, Morris Watts, in the first half. Billy, where that guy's playing you when we run the quick game, you can't take a short field, see, because where he's at, if he just takes two steps outside, he's underneath the quick out. So you got to pull everything down. Don't throw any high balls. That was just a hell of a play they made on the sale. Yeah, I mean, that was a hell of a play. Just the, the, the interplay and the confidence building between the Boy, coordinator the up in the, upstairs the in the box and the quarterback that's under fire on, on the field. And the thing you said to me during halftime, the patience that you have to have, you got to remember these are kids. Yeah, and, uh, you know, <laughs> Morris Watts has been around. He's been with a lot of different style of quarterbacks from the beginning, freshmen to seniors that have really done it. And you have to be patient. Loss of three by Clemens in second down and 13. Play action now for Burke. Down the middle, tipped by Brandon Short. He got a nice drop from his middle linebacker position to break it up. Bill Burke, pass intended for number 83. Bill Burke in the first half. Five of 13 in the intermediate area. They've gone deep three times and haven't completed a pass, but... Uh, nor has he completed a pass to Plaxico Burris, has he? No, he hasn't. And I'm sure Plaxico may have told him about that. <laughs> third down, 13. Third down at 13. There's the big guy, 6'6", six, six, coming out to meet a 5'9 corner in Macklin on the near side. Burris. He threw it out, and Plaxico Burris was running upfield, unless it was he was hit when he threw it. Yeah, Billy Burke hit his first four passes of the day, and then has only hit two of the last 15 that he's thrown. And Kirk Kirk got him at that. Yeah. Time. So Michigan State doesn't do anything with a great field position they had. And Jarrett will have to kick again. Great Jarrett comes with his part. Rod Perry goes Rod back. Perry. Deep for Penn State. 15th punch in this ball game. Jarrett hammered his last one before halftime, 67-yarder. lays it up high, taken at the 14-yard line. Penn State's got the ball back, but they trail 28-7. to 12.37 left in the third quarter. It's 28-7 to Michigan State. Penn State's got the ball back, but again, horrible field position, and that's been part of the reason that they have been held without a first down in seven of those 11 possessions. And as we said, of the previous 11 possessions, six of them started at the 20 or worse. Here they are again. It's inside the 15. From behind, Kevin Thompson. McCoo. Down he goes again. Eric McCoo running like Marilyn McCoo today, so far. <laughs> that play was designed to go inside, but number 75 in there, Nick Myers just stuffed it inside and bounces it out, and then, then the speed gets outside. All the young guys in the truck are saying, who's Marilyn McCoo? Right? <laughs> Got to look up your fifth dimension history for that one. Second down <laughs> in a long eight. Number 85 there, the tight end, has caught five of the seven passes that uh, the quarterbacks have completed. Thompson over the middle and batted down again. They've gotten a hand on a lot of them. Jay Saylor or Robert Smith, both in the vicinity. <laughs> Robert Smith. 80 Sailor in the center. Knocked that one down. He was trying to get a crossing route. That's two or three today. They've knocked down. And it brings up third and long again. Third and eight. Mitchell in a slot as a wide receiver. 
Tight end in motion. Here comes the safety blitz. Thompson wide open is tight end. And Gilmore got a first down out of the 30. That's what happens when you bring the safety. If you can find that vacated area, Newsom came on the blitz. And he's going to hit tight end number 85. Is that Gilmore right up the seam? That's what the Fran Ganner was talking about. Seeing the blitz, reading the hot read, and getting the ball off. The hot read means you can't block the linebacker that's blitzing, so you throw it in the area where he blitzed to the receiver that's the hot receiver. Probably the best-looking play offensively for Penn State today, believe it or not. Picked up 14 in the first down out to 31. Mitchell gets a little head of steam on the left side and gets out to the 36 before Eric Morris wraps him up. Coming up Friday, 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 Pacific. We'll kick off your Thanksgiving weekend with number six Texas against Texas A&M, one of the oldest rivalries in college football. Then at 2.30 Eastern and 11.30 Pacific, Eric Crouch in fourth rank, Nebraska. Trying to keep their Big 12 and BCS title hopes alive in Boulder against Colorado. That's our doubleheader the day after Thanksgiving. Now Nebraska's got a win yep. to go to the Big 12 championship game. As Kansas State put a pace in on Missouri today. If you missed it. Second and three. Mitchell again. Mitchell takes his way across the 40. It looks like he's got a first down. We talked about rushing quarterback. We talked about Eric Crouch, the leading rusher for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We saw them last week, and uh, they had a resounding victory over Kansas State, and now a week off to rest up before their trip to the mountains. What are they ranked? Uh, third, uh, third or fourth in the BCS poll. Yeah, they're yeah. ranked third. But they, they've got a weakness, a major weakness. It's that they fumble the football. Oh, I guess. Ten yeah. fumbles last week in that Kansas State game. Lost it three times. Somehow overcame that. Their defense did a great job on Kansas State. I hope. Omar Easy. And making it look that way on the left side. For a first down run in the Michigan State Territory. As Joe Picardo and Frank Ganner have shaken up their backfield a little bit here in this third quarter. And Cordell Mitchell and Omar Easy have gotten it down to the Spartan 44. Well, the short side of that line, Ransom and McKenzie over there. McKenzie 67, Ransom 55, Cole 51, Caruso 74. And uh, Easy does a nice job. Just slides to the outside and, and gets the yardage. First down at the 44 yard line. 48 to 7. Michigan State here in the third quarter. And falling out of the stance, Jay Saylor. I don't know if the penalty's going to be on him for being in the neutral zone. I think that's the call. Prior to the snap, offside by contact on the defense. Five yard penalty remains first down. So a 3 5. For Penn State as the penalties walk off against the Spartans down to the 39-yard line. And with 10-14 remaining at Spartan Stadium in the third quarter, a game dominated by the Spartans. The Penn State try to fight their way back in it. They have only one touchdown. Their special teams haven't been today. Kevin Thompson going deep. Man's there. Look it up. Looks like it was going to be a touchdown to Drummond. But Cedric Henry was there to get a hand on it. Yeah, he did a nice job. The only thing that Drummond could have done is come back and fought for the ball. The, the pass was a little underthrown. Take a look from behind the defense. Thompson tries to get it out as far as he can. Drummond could have gone up and fought for it instead of waiting for it to come down. Boy, nice play by Cedric Henry, Henry the sophomore out of Sarasota. So you look at it from the defense standpoint. I wasn't from an offensive guy. <laughs> If he goes up and goes after it, he catches it. Yeah, I agree. Second down and five. Crenshaw in motion. They go back to the ground at easy. And he's not going to get the first down. Sean Wright. Backup linebacker made the stop. Uh, Brad, Bob, I just want to throw my two cents as a formal receiver. Oh, he thought you'd get in here. <laughs> We're up oh, here talking, way. and you're down there. <laughs> but it's, it's, you're both right, but right here, if you had slowed down, he could even draw a little pass in the parents because the defensive back is looking so much at the ball, and he just slows down, gets a little bump, and they also proves himself to make a better, give himself a better chance of making the catch. Save that thought for a minute, buddy. I don't know what's happening. Third and five, Chucky Fields is in motion. Thompson's in trouble. 
And he got it to Drummond this time. And it's the first down in front of the same guy, Cedric Hendrick. Larry, when you're running down the sideline like that, and you're the receiver, and you get past the defensive back, isn't it smart for the receiver not to use all this speed, but to kind of slow up and, and kind of hold back the defensive back, and then when you see the ball, just just give enough gas to well, stop? Especially if you because know the quarterback's going to have a hard time throwing it that far. Yeah. And it's going to hang up there. You know, you got to judge the ball. It's a hard thing to do. It, it's the difference between being a guy who runs down the field and makes catches and being a real receiver. Yeah. All those little things make you a receiver. It's like positioning yourself on the defensive back. Play action for Thompson. He's going to go for the throttle man again, and he overshot him. And Campbell covering. Eddie Drummond had a step back there. He's got great speed, but as I said, maybe he has a little trouble controlling yeah, his if throttle. He, if he throws this ball more across the field rather than down the field, he would have had a touchdown. The play action fake, and he's got great coverage. He's a receiver's got him beat by a few steps, but he throws it down the center of the field over, instead of throwing it away to our left. If he throws it over there, the receiver can run away from the defensive back and catch it. Penn State, the 11th play of this drive, has shown it at their own 14-yard line. Play fake again. Thompson with time. Crossing pass. Complete. It'll be close to a first down to Rod Perry. Looks like he's about a yard short, or maybe not even a yard. Sort of a good football game today. He has, and he's just a sophomore, true sophomore, and one of the, the outstanding uh, recruits that uh, Michigan State has got out, uh, out of the state in the last few years. So it's third down and a yard coming up. Not very good last week, and just a little better today. Not very good this week. Larry Johnson, the tailback, gets the call. He's not going to get it. Hubert Thompson with a clothesline job. And it's going to be fourth down. Hubert Thompson just, just discouraged the offensive tackle that was blocking on him. And just comes in and stops the, the, the effort. Thompson, number 89. Right there. Oh, is that, is that a good play or what? They call him Boo Boo, and I think that's probably what Johnson has right now, right across his neck. Well, when you're down by 21 points, you got to go for it. Cerebelli and Johnson in the backfield. Two tight ends set fourth and one. Penn State playing by 21. Cerebelli with fullback got it. And almost broke it. Nice open field back. <laughs> got to be Eric Ward. <laughs> I mean, you stand up Saramelli and do a four tackle, it's going to be Morris. And you're right. Saramelli doesn't get an opportunity to carry it very often. But he's the fullback using the blocker, and Eric Morris, the leading tackler. Eric's up. Plug team, man. Co-captain. Big Ten player of the week twice already this year. First down, Penn State. In the red zone at the 19 of the spot. And a little confusion in the backfield about Thompson's running for his life. Dragged down for a loss. Somebody went the wrong way in the backfield. He wanted to pitch that thing or hand it off, but there was nobody home, and now he's shaking up. Let's take a look at it. See, the fullback, if the fullback went to our right, the back, the tailback was probably supposed to go that way. See, Kevin's just tired of, tired from running out of bounds. Yep. You know, when you, you know, one of the real tricks you do is you go talk to the official and say, you know, you, uh, you know, what's, uh, did, did I get hit late or, uh, what, what down is it? Just talk to him a little bit, you know, ask him how his wife is or something. <laughs> get my breath, let me get my breath. Second and 14, he's out of breath again. Julian Peterson deposits him this time. And Kevin is slow getting up. That one hurt. He's taken too many of those shots. He has. Right here on the end of the line. 98. That's not fair. Somebody's got a block that guy. Julian Peterson coming into the game. He has four forced fumbles. 22 tackles for loss and 10 sacks. 
and he is a difference maker. And it's been a tough day for Kevin Thompson. Third down and 14. They're loading up again. Here they come again. He got rid of it. Drummond made the catch. Touchdown, Penn State. That was a great throw. Kevin Thompson never saw the end of it. But the beginning of it was just enough to get it to Drummond for the score. He took another one. He, he never sees this. He sees the blitz coming. Morris is nine. Throw it quick. Well, he knew he was going to take some punishment. He just barely got this ball out enough to Drummond, and Drummond does a nice job of catching. Extra point coming up from Travis Ford. Campbell says it's on the ground. 23-yard touchdown. Catch, and the extra point is good. And suddenly it's a little bit of a ball game. 6.48 to go third quarter. He's beat up, but he's still standing. 48-14, Michigan State. Joe Pye pacing the sideline. His team's just gotten a second touchdown, the longest touchdown drive of the day by either team. 86 yards, just under six minutes. Kevin Thompson took a lick it and kept on ticking. And through the touchdown pass for 43 yards, Sally Drummond. Here's Paulie's kick. It'll be short, taken. Well, somebody's going to take it. It bounces. Boy, that was dangerous. Go back and take a look at the touchdown. Linebacker blitzes here. Another one outside. The three receiver's going to go down, break to the inside. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Kevin Thompson knows he's going to get hit, buys a little bit of time, and just throws it to the outside and gives Drummond an opportunity to catch it, and he did a good job positioning himself. He certainly does, Bob, but this play worked in spite of the route he runs. He got a blitz on. He runs this downfield. He's going to get a touchdown for the blitz control route. The receiver's really going to break off the route much faster because the quarterback has got to get through the ball faster. Used his body to shield the defender just well enough to make the sliding catch. And now Kevin Thompson's trying to make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. <laughs> he says, I've got, I've got my rib pads on, but uh, they're hitting me so much that uh, they're hitting me other places here. Remember, he's got five stitches in his chin from last week and a dislocated jaw. Now they're checking the left rib cage of the senior quarterback. And now the defense has its turn. They need a stop to get their team back in it. Burke, there might be the stop right there. Got away from Brown, but he didn't get away from Ron Graham. The so Courtney chases him down, number 86, forces him to reverse, and then Graham, number three, tracks him down and gets the sack. Big hit back at the eight-yard line. Penn State is slowly sneaking back yes, into this ball game. You can feel the shift a little bit. A little look at the 74,000 that are here. Defensive turnover here, a little fumble and something like that. But the big play guy on defense is sitting it out. If he just joined us, LeVar Arrington not playing today with a bruised shoulder. Third and 18 for the shotgun. Burke got rid of it. It's it. Picked up by Brandon Short. He's inside the 10. There you go. There you go. Brandon Short, who said all week, we don't want to be the team to lose three straight and go from being in the BCS to totally crumbling. And the senior co-captain's got the interception. Right side of your screen, number 43, picks it off. One of the problems that Michigan State has had is turning it over. And Penn State has had a propensity on defense to get the ball for their offense in big games, and they've done it here. Rashard Casey, a quarterback, probably due to whatever they're working on, Kevin Thompson on the sideline. But it's first and goal. Danny Watson in there is the tailback. Casey drops, fires, has it batted in the air, and it's intercepted right back. And it's T.J. Carter. Back-to-back -back takeaways. Number 50 comes around. 
sees the ball coming, jumps up, knocks it in the air, and then has the presence Turner. This is Turner's fourth interception of the year. He's had two that he turned back for touchdown. First down at the 14-yard line. One hop by T.J. Duncan. We almost had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back turnover. What happened at halftime? Did they say put the footballs in a bag of butter or what? <laughs> I don't know. We're going good on the offense until this. Michigan State trying to win its ninth game of the year, trying to run their record to a perfect 6-0 and at home. Also something that hasn't happened since that 66 season. Goes down again, slipped a little bit on takeoff. It's going to be third and nine. Courtney Brown in on another tackle. I guess you question why Richard Casey was in there on that big turnover. Uh, and I think you hit the nail on the head. He's probably still over there being looked at. Thompson is 6'5 and probably could have thrown over. There he is right there. Heads off there. Everything off, and they're putting putting the bigger, bigger rib pads on him. Well, he, he's a tough customer. Third down and eight, which is where the Spartans don't want to get too crazy here either. Give it up again. And they will keep it on the ground to try to get it. Duck it, hit. That pedals across the 20, but he doesn't get the first down. They played it safe. And it's a three and out for Michigan State. Devin Thompson got the jersey back on. They're still rearranging the rib pads, and you can see why. That's because this day has been another one of those kind of days. Those are just some of the hits he took on the last series. There's a guy there. Three credits short of a kinesiology screen. He's going to be three teeth full of a mouthful pretty soon if they don't give him some You protection. know, all those new pads they're putting on, it doesn't help all that hurt <laughs> right. that he already has. Oh, what a great punch. Branch has to go back. Takes it at the 24. Waits for his blockers. Now here he goes. Bruce Branch. Was and about one more wave to get by, and he would have been off to the races. Well, as it is, he got good field position. 19-yard punt return. We'll be back. Just under three minutes in the third. 28-14 Michigan State, but Penn State's got it back. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Flan, I'm Brad Nessler from Spartan Stadium with 74,231 looking on. Rashad Casey will take another series at quarterback. Kenny Watson cuts outside and got to the 49-yard line. Nice gain of about six. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Burger King, have it your way. National Car Rental, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. And Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments. Use the power of Pacific Life. And near the Motor City. Getting the wheel. Nice wheels on that. Nice wheel. Yeah, very nice. Second down and four. Penn State hoping to get their wheels under them here. The trail by two touchdowns. Toss. Delmar Easy. And he's got a first down. Back in Michigan State territory. No flag. Delmar Easy on the carry for Penn State. Nice flag came in. Eric Notice all of the tailbacks and halfbacks that uh, Joe Paterno was using. It's going to be a holding call. The gate's the first down run. Might have been Eric Cole, the center, pulled around there to try to lead the way. Oh, can see it from there. So. But instead of a first down, here's a 45. It comes all the way back to their own 41. Only the second penalty against Joe Paterno's team, but kind of a costly one there. A lot of running backs. And one of the things that Paterno likes to do is keep his running backs fresh into the fourth quarter. He usually plays two or three today. He's played four. McCoo, Mitchell, Watson, and Easy have all carried the football. That was McCoo you were seeing behind the assistant coaches. Second down and 12. Casey. And he's going to tuck it. And take off. Run out of bounds on the far side. About a yard and a half shy of the first down. Defending. That's what he does best. Well, Casey didn't have any place to go downfield with it. 
everybody was covered, so he did a nice job and take it off. William Peterson, linebacker, defensive end, grabbed the hold of uh, Stewart just a little bit. Rashad Casey's reset, Penn State's leading rusher. Third down and one. They split from a dual backfield. And that leaves Kenny Watson behind Casey. Casey's going to throw for it. A drummer made a great catch. He's got great speed. 30, 25, coming. All the way to the five-yard line. And Campbell saved a touchdown. This is the number 20, Eddie Drummond. This is the same pass he's been hitting. Hitting with with uh, Casey. With the wide receiver coming across. Right here is Drummond. He's just going to let the defensive line clear out. It's not a long throw. He just comes right down. It's just a short pass and a long run, hopefully. And you're right. Drummond with lots of speed almost gets it in. He's the fastest guy on the Penn State team. He got him to the four where it's first and goal. And they're a play away from very much being in this game. Four catches for Drummond, all on third down, all good for first down. That one got 44 yards. Casey lobs it. And it tells that could have been disaster. It was intended for McCoo and Jace Saylor. You get an inexperienced quarterback in there. The last time the ball was intercepted, Casey couldn't get it past the line of scrimmage. There, there's a technique that's involved here. Thompson gets a hand on it. Yeah, exactly. But the quarterback's got to be a kind of a con man to get a pass defensive line. you got to look, look the them off the door at one side and throw it around him and be quick about getting the ball past him. Sarah Melly and McCool behind Rashard Casey, second and goal at the four. Illegal motion. Eric McCool, there's the flag. McCool to the corner. Two guys moving at the same time, never stop. That's going to make it a second down a goal back near the nine-yard line after Steve Newman walks this off. And there's the call that Bob gave you well before the flag was even thrown. 1.22 left. An illegal shift. Watch this man right here in the back as he slides back to the tailback position. He's going to slide back. Go ahead and run it. He moves. Now the other back moves before he gets stopped. And he never stops. He keeps his feet moving. His feet are moving. His feet are moving. His feet are still moving. If he would have stopped and set for a second, it would have been all right. So now it's back at the nine. Drummond and Crenshaw, the two wideouts, both to the left, and McCool coming motion out of the backfield to the right. Casey, looking that way, pump fakes, now running for his life, and runs out of real estate. Robert Smith took him out of bounds, it's third and goal. You know, you know that, that illegal motion penalty that they just had, they were down inside the three-yard line, and they would have been like in the, on the one-yard, now that penalty moves them back. And those are penalties that you should not have in the 11th game, 12th game of the season. And then they lose a couple more yards on the scramble by Casey. Well, you know, Casey's out there scrambling, but it looks like they 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 really just tried not to rush him, but they put the pocket around him, saying, if you're going to throw it, we'll jump up, but we don't want you to run to the outside. Look at the way the defensive end keeps the outside position, flushes him all the way out to the outside. You know, if, if you really rush the quarterback, especially a guy like Deshaun Casey who can run, you take away that angle inside, he gets around to the outside, and he can run into the end zone untouched. And the reason there's a stoppage in play right now is because Robert Smith, who ran Casey out of bounds, rolled into one of the officials and part of the crowd of them. He's Fred, taken up. Go ahead and start this, and I'll show you the pocket that they put the trying to do. If you stop it right about here, up there. Look at that. They're trying to keep... Here's a defensive man, defensive man, defensive man. They're trying to keep him in the pocket, but Casey ejects and just takes off way wide, and that's why he loses yardage on this play. They were just containing. They weren't rushing. They were just containing him. The big guy, Robert Smith, finally gets up and comes all the way from the far sideline over to his own bench. 
Look at that goal. 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 It's a two-man run, and they're recovered. They just can't block Peterson. The man is covered. It was a quick route. It was a quick route. You can't stay in there. One, two, three, and throw. Either throw it or take off. The offensive linemen don't think they have to block very long, and they're not going to. Graham is going to try a field goal of 31 yards, and he's got it. So Penn State gets a little bit closer with 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Spartans 28-17. Coming up at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate two $1,000 high school scholarships. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan, our ABC crew in Spartan Stadium under the lights. Kevin Thompson got his helmet back on, and he's looking for a chance to get back on the field. But they did get a field goal on their last trip, and now they only trail 28-17, inching their way back into the football game. I think Joe mixed up some nice juice in there and had these guys drink it because this is a different football team for Penn State than that we saw in the first half. Boys kick goes to Hayden with a wide deep. And Herb will bring it up. And maybe should have. Nice stop on the special teams as we go to New York and John Sutter. John. Brad Stanford is trying to wrap up that Roseville trip and looks like they're going to get it done. Case Seymour, 94 yards on this touchdown run. 28 to 13 is the lead over Cal. Cal's defense having a tough time in this one trying to stop the Cardinal. 28 to 13, Brad. I bet Barry Alvarez is smiling. Yeah. And I say that only because the Stanford defense is very similar to what UCLA was last year. Against the run. Against the run. First down. A good one by Art Clemens down near the 20 yard line. How about the job Ty Willingham has done, though, for Stanford after getting hammered in their opener by Texas? They battle back and have a chance for the Rosen. We're down to final seconds of the third quarter. The BCS still interested maybe in the teams you're watching right here. An ABC Sports presentation of college football. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. minutes left at Spartan Stadium, Michigan State 28, Penn State 17, and the rain starts to fall, and that'll cool things off. On an already cool and dreary day, the rain started now here in the fourth quarter. That should help the defense. They've got to give the Clemens. The defense looks pretty good right there. Maybe a half-yard game. How about these numbers? Or lack of. Two things. That's not normally the case. 53 catches coming in. Second in the Big Ten in yards per game. Over 18 a catch. Nine touchdowns. His size. A cool record. 18 career touchdowns. And nothing today. They thrown at it three times. And he hasn't caught any of them. Had three touchdown receptions last week. He comes out here to the near side to meet David Macklin again. Goes down in a heat. Her pinkness was in there. And I mean in a hurry. The defenses are starting to take over this ball game. Leishauer gets credit for the sack. Her pinkness was there with him. The short set. Coverage is there. And then the sack man is there. Leishauer with the second sack of the year. Jarrett now has got a kick from his own goal line, and Branch is dangerous standing there at midfield. Not a good punt. Branch is going to take it on one hop. 
They did a good job just to do that. Yeah. And not let it go another 12, 15 yards downfield. Yeah. Kevin Thompson is back in at quarterback for Penn State. On the sidelines, they look like they were trying to get Vivian Lee in a corset for going with a win, but they got him re-strapped. <laughs> and he's ready to play some more. He is one tough customer. He is. If he can just wear have a, a steel jaw. That's right. There's his numbers today. Try to lead Penn State back. It's for 28 to 7. Now it's 28 to 17. McCoo, does he want to throw? Now he reverses his field. He's got Thompson as a blocker. And he got a great block. McCoo inside the 30. 20. Out of bounds at the 15. That looked like it was going to be a halfback option. Yeah, it was. He came back. He had Kevin Thompson and Thompson laid a man out. He just did a nice overall job of first not throwing the ball when it wasn't there and then coming back and make something out of it. Top of your screen, double coverage, so he comes back and Richards to number seven. Not right there in the white jersey does a nice job of not blocking from behind. Look at the block on Nick Myers by the senior quarterback. Yeah. Says I'm just getting even for some of the shots you gave me. From the 16, here's Omar Easy on a cross sweep. And Easy goes for three or four. And we go to John Saunders for our play of the day. John? That's right, Brad. The Burger King play of the game. Play of the day, rather. Jarrett Payton here wearing his dad's number 34. Should have been stopped, but something gets him into the end zone. His first career college football touchdown gathers the ball in and then points skyward to his dad, Walter. That's your Burger King play of the day. Right. Yeah, what do you say for that? That gives you chills. 12 40 left in the game. Play fake by Thompson. Plenty of time. Now running out of it. Throws on a run incomplete. And he got dumped again by Boo Boo Thompson. As Thompson meets Thompson over there on the roll. Nobody that big and that heavy and ugly should, should be run called that fast. Should be and run that fast should be called Boo Boo. <laughs> Boo Boo should be small and cute and cuddly. Maybe Yogi would be better. <laughs> He's been all over the place. So is Julian Peterson today for this defense. And now it's a third down. This is, you would think, two down territory, but there's still 12 and a half minutes to play. Uh, Penn State has dominated play in the second half. Look at this. Michigan State minus two yards. Third down is five. After Michigan State 12 yard line. Harris a single setback and easy in motion. Thompson. Crossing pattern. Got his man drawn. Touchdown. Same route. Same result. They glued it back together and he just threw another touchdown pass. It's the same route that they scored on and set up the other touchdown. Drummond. Shallow route right across the middle, easy throw, but the best thing is you don't have to have a lot of protection. Find a, find a way in there and just complete it. So it's going right up the middle, receiver from left to right, find him as he crosses. And they're going for two. Caramelli in the two behind Thompson. Perry in motion, the only wide receiver. Play fix. They're going to throw for it. They've got it. McCool. Did he get in? Yes. Yes. They got the two. And I mean, there was a train wreck at the goal line. Not by much. Nick Saban showing concern. And why not? Senior Kevin Thompson off the sideline. Restrapped, re-padded, reloaded. Touchdown pass and a two-point conversion. It's 28-25, no question. Scoring drive, 48 yards, just four plays, took them 65 seconds. Thompson to Drummond, 18 unanswered points for Joe Paterno, Nittany Lions. And we, indeed, have a ball game. Whatever Joe said to him at halftime, he ought to write a book and sell it. Put it in the pamphlet. 
looking for his 10th one of the season and number 317 on his career. But Nick Saban Spartans have something to say about that with 12 and a half to play. 40 a kick. Agood and Flowers back deep. And the kick coverage here in the fence. They did a great job on the last kick. Let's see how they do here. It'll be Flowers from the 12. Up the middle. And he got it out to the 30 yard line. Drummond sets down reception. Right here, he's a wide receiver. He's just going to make a, a run across the field, a shallow route. No defensive backs go with it because they're dropping straight back in a zone coverage. Thompson doesn't have to throw the ball very far, and you use your speed coming laterally to get in the end zone. And he does a good job, Bob, of just coming under control. He's sliding, he sees his zone. He doesn't outrun the coverage. He stays underneath, gives his quarterback an excellent target, then just turns it up the field. Now, if the quarterback for Michigan State had done a better job of staying home, he might have had a chance for a tackle, but he ran inside, Bob. Well, I think, think Drummond was listening to you guys after he had that chance in the end zone. He hasn't done anything wrong since. Here's the throw to Clinton. Now, the backfield, but he's going to stumble a little bit out of takeoff, but he's actually going to lose yardage for it. Well, you mentioned Drummond. He's got five catches, 103 yards, two touchdowns, and all five catches have come on third down. Michigan State would take those kind of numbers on offense as a team if they could get them because it's halftime, very little to show for 13 plays. How about minus four yards? And they lost two more right there. It's second down and 12. The emotions, the emotions of young people, young kids, and, and the uh, momentum can change very quickly. Mac Morris is showing blitz right now in a track stand. Here it comes. Burke under pressure. Flag down. The throw is complete. And finally, they got one to Plaxico Burris, but it may all be coming back. Emily <laughs> Marker in the backfield. Holding Michigan State. Guess when they get something to go their way. Yep. Sandusky coming on the outside. That might have been where the... That's, I think that was it. They yep. were holding number 45. Tight end wrapped an arm around his shoulder. It's tough enough. Oh, when the defense stops you, now you're stopping yourself. We haven't seen a game change complexion like this one in a long time. It seems like just a few minutes ago, 28 to 7. I, I, I think what happened with Penn State, they were embarrassed. And their pride got to them. And Joe just reminded them and they just came out and they just started playing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I think they had a little bit of a hangover from last week's loss, the last two weeks loss in the first half. And they just came out and said, let's let's play some ball. Boy, that was a hangover. I want their ass to <laughs> the throw. Each sideline and a penalty marker is gonna fly in there. Ascari Adams. That's 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 a very fortunate call. For Michigan State because he was double covered. Billberg's pass intended for number four. Bazu and Ascari Adams kind of sandwiched him. I don't even know if he could have gotten to it had they no, not. No, he was there. double covered and, and the, the ball would have been intercepted if anything. The receiver had no chance. Here he is down here. He's going to come down and make a move, but he's going to be double covered. To the bottom of your screen, the two white shirts. There's no way he catches that ball. down out of the 33 so finally they get a first down out of Plaxico Burris by penalty and the first first down since there was three minutes left in the first half yeah their last four possessions they started inside their 20 yard line first down at the 33 try to hold on to a three-point lead loads and fires into good pass good pitch and catch there after Gary Scott first down out of the 44 Remember, Gary Scott got this thing going for Michigan State with a punt return touchdown. And now, finally, the crowd starts to show their appreciation for 28 seniors out here. Behind the offense, good pass protection. Going on first down, you usually get good pass protection. Down under 11 minutes. 
the ground they go, and Clemens weaves his way for two, maybe three, as we go to John Saunders in New York. John? Penn State trying to avoid losing for the third consecutive time, but here's Boston College in Notre Dame. Darius Jackson intercepted by Pedro Serena. Boston College has their eighth win. They have Virginia Tech up next, and Notre Dame will not go to a ball. Meanwhile, TCU's Ladanian Tomlinson had 406 yards and six touchdowns today. That's a record in Division 1A, 1AA, and Division 2. Quite a day. Right. That's incredible. Notre Dame running out of the miracles. Yep. Bill Burke playing a off play action a little bit high, and Baker couldn't hold it at midfield. Took a pretty good shot from James Boyd while he was in midair, but that one sailed now, again Bill on Bill Burke. Burke. And it's, it's raining down there, so it's getting a little bit hard. He was covered by Penn State's James Boyd. Throw and catch. Now the nickel defense comes in for Penn State. Now this is this is when you don't want to have to throw the football. Third and eight against the nickel defense, and they've got all the good pass rushers in there. Gary Sandusky's defense looking to come up with a stop. Michigan State has failed in their last six third down conversion attempts. Here they come. They pick it up. Burke goes, throws. Almost intercepted. It is intercepted by Brian Scott. Brian Scott, who just came into that nickel package, uh, true freshman, gets the interception. Quarterbacks have to make more decisions than anybody during a ball game, and you have to make good decisions. Just going to run a, a down and out to the outside. The, the defensive back is going to be underneath him. Scott looks back. Sees the ball. If you throw that ball, you throw it long to give your guy a chance and nobody else. Penn State with an opportunity now. If they can get a field goal on this drive to tie or take the lead. They'll look from the 39. McCoo cuts inside across the 40 up to about the 42. Well, the first half was all Michigan State. As we talked about in the second half, all Penn State. First, it was Kevin Thompson being hit, but Eddie Drummond making a sliding catch for a score, and then Brandon Short, the senior captain, picks one off. Kevin Thompson again, after getting a restrap. Eddie Drummond on a crossing pattern again, and now the interception is moments to go by. Brian Scott has got the Whitney Lions in gear, second down and seven. Play action. Thompson might want it all again. Deep ball for Drummond. He's out there, and they overshot him by a couple yards. Well, that's good. Pretty good coverage, but he had a couple of steps on the guy, but that, that ball had to be thrown by 55 yards. That's, that's a tough completion in the rain. Cedric Henry was covering with help from Eric Morris, the safety, as Eddie Drummond's number. And the play comes in from the bench to the person of Sam Crenshaw, another wide receiver on a third down and seven. Everybody up for the Michigan State defense. Thompson under pressure. Got it to him. Got it to him. Still inside the 30. One ball on a 14 yard run. Unbelievable. 45 yards to his tight end, Tony Stewart. I'm starting to think Thompson thrives on getting hit while he throws. Thompson is, is turning this whole thing around. The motion's going to come out here, but the tight end is going to be on the backside. It's just going to be a, a backside completion to the tight end. He gets the ball in there between defensive backs, and Stewart just does something with it. The best view of a Kevin Thompson pass for him is from his butt. That's where he landed again, but it's 45 yards later. Well, he's in with this game. There's no question about that. Is he ever. First down at the 13. Omar Easy, but one tackle. Looking for blockers, doesn't really find any. Kevin Thompson named a cut captain before this season started when Penn State normally picks him before the bowl game. And he has taken shot after shot.
Mostert shot. He's given a shot or two, and he's thrown a couple touchdown passes, and he's got Penn State within striking distance right now. There's no question that uh, he is the guy that has brought him back this second half. Second and 10 at the 13. Watson and McCoo, and an eye backfield behind him, and now McCoo will flush that backfield. And go out as a wide receiver. Here comes the blitz. Thompson throws. Incomplete. McCoo would have been the intended receiver. Eric Morris was covering at the goal line. Well, he was covered. There was no chance to get that ball in there. Penn State's done in the red zone today. Three touchdowns and a field goal in their five trips. And the only other time they came up short, they had intercepted that pass and they threw it right back right. to T.J. Turner. He got the ball on the nine-yard line yeah. going in and didn't get any points out of it. Third and ten, Penn State. At the Michigan State 13-yard line. They're loading up everybody close again to come at Kevin Thompson. And here they come. Thompson. Over Scott Crenshaw. Never had a chance on that play. A miscommunication there. He was going to the outside. Crenshaw was running a slant. Thompson was expecting a fade. But Travis Forty comes out. He's 20 and 25 on the year. Hit one earlier today. And because they made the two-point conversion after their last touchdown, they're only down by a field goal. Second to Brett Conway in school history in field goals. And boy, does he need this 30-yarder from the right half. This to tie the game with 7.50 left. 40 from 30. And he got it. We're all tied up. 21 unanswered points for Penn State. And even though one of their stars isn't playing, he's cheerleading on the sideline. 28, 28. Don't go away. Penn State has not lost three to end the season since 1922. That was four years before that guy was born. Michigan State hasn't won nine in a season since 1966, their championship year. We're deadlocked at 28 from Spartan Stadium. Hey, good. Four yards deep, we'll take an ease. Standings in the Big Ten, if you missed it earlier, Michigan. A winner over Ohio State. So this one very much has a bearing on who goes where as far as the bowl games are concerned. Penn State looking for their 10th win for an 18th season. And Michigan State trying to go 9-2. and two. How about Glenn Mason in uh, Minnesota? Great job. 8-3. and three. Came from behind to beat Iowa today. Purdue a winner over Indiana. Big Illinois. And Ron Turner did a great job. Big Ten will have seven, seven teams eligible for bowls. And Ryan Van Dyke, that's what he did last week, comes in to take over for Bill Burke. It's a tough spot to come in. Boy, you're not kidding. Here comes Duckett. Duckett broke the tackle. The big guy ahead of Steve. He stepped out at the 39, but he still got 19 yards. That's not a bad way for a, for a fresh quarterback to break in. Hand it to your back and let Duckett run some. But Team Cleve says, all right, guys, that's the way we need to do it. Duckett, what a day he's had already. Three touchdowns, a 20-yarder up the middle to start things off in this game. That takes it around left end for another score. And his third touchdown of the day gave what Michigan State looked to have a comfortable lead. That's all evaporated. But that run by him, and here he comes again. This time he's dropped in his track. But he's well over 100 yards on the ground today. On his 13 carries for 125. And three touchdowns for the freshman. And as I said earlier when we were talking, if you missed us talking with Barry Alvarez, the reason I said he might be the next coming of Ron Dane, 6'2", 255, and yeah. still growing. Yes, yeah. and, and can run, as you've seen from his speed. I mean, he is large, and he can run. At the 39-yard line, Michigan State now trying to come back at the seven-minute mark and muster something offensively behind Ryan Van Dyke. Watch those hands! Hey, watch this! No Brown's got it. The sack master on defensive end just ate up the tackle and swoops in there to pick up his 14th sack of the year. You're not going to have much time when Courtney Brown is coming at, 
catch it. Throw it on your first play because your second one, you're not going to have Pinko. Two K Pinko, the, the offensive tackle that was hurting before the game, got the uh, let him get the sack. Career record holder for sacks and tackles for loss, and he just keeps adding to that total, 14 miles. And he forces a third and 16. And nickel defense in there again for Penn State. They picked off a pass the last time in this situation. Here comes the blitz. Van Dyke goes complete. But Gary Scott can only get back across the original line of scrimmage to the 40, and Michigan State's got to give it up. The defensive side got it. Next Saturday night, Gary Jackson and Notre Dame go up against the Stanford team that looks like it's headed to the Rose Bowl. Next Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC Sports. Home of the Bowl Championship Series. Bruce Branch waits on a punt. It'll be around five and a half minutes left in this game. And this ball is kicking. And Branch may have a chance. He does from the 28. Out to the 35, a seven-yard return. 5.26 remaining for Penn State. The senior leader on the sideline looking to bring him back. 26 left tied up. You think this doesn't have some impact on what could happen as you look at the bowl championship series standings. Florida State battling Florida now. Virginia Tech won handily. Nebraska off. Florida involved in that game, obviously. Tennessee won big. Alabama plays Auburn tonight. Wisconsin sitting back ready to go to the Rose Bowl. And right here, Penn State and Michigan State both thinking about New Year's Day and who will be where. Kevin Thompson throws complete to his tight end. The ball is loose. Michigan State's got it. I think at this point right here, 
And really all you want to do is run the ball, make some yardage, take some time off the clock, and then kick a field goal. What you'd like to do is make one more first down offensively, and then keep running the ball until you have to kick it. Edinger's numbers, 86%. put out of his mind what may be coming up for. Second down and eight. Burris and Scott both flip to the right side. They'll run it that way. Duckett had to give some ground to gain some, and he did, and does. Well, he was lucky there because normally when you get that ground, to get ground, you're not going to get back to where you get where you were before. Dupe Pego, who got bounced around by Courtney Brown earlier, got a nice block here. Pego is number 74. Kind of pulls a little bit. 85, that's the tight end, McCoy. Doesn't do, get much of a block, but he occupies it. I guess that's the nicest thing you can do. Yeah. Two. Boxed out with 314 left. That's the only thing they didn't want to do on that last carry. Go out of bounds. Exactly. This time they won. And I think he's got it. I don't oh, think maybe so. not. He was a little short. Zach Morris has tripped him up. Looks to be a foot or so shy. Now, what do you do? You take your shot here if you're Michigan State. Oh, they're a whole yard shot, I guess. You take your shot here and give uh, Penn State three minutes to get a field goal. That's the scary part. <laughs> <laughs> but you put your best unit on the on the field if you're Michigan State. Your defensive unit goes back on the field. Well, they're going to bring the sticks out to make an official measurement. But unless the field's crooked, this thing's quite a bit short. Yep. Two feet. We got a kicker. Yeah, what are you going to do? Oh boy, he's leaving his offense out there. Well, I can I can see where you might go this way. He's leaving him out there. Well, he's leaving him out there for now. For now. I can see where you might go this way. Now the fans start cheering, and the offense that Michigan State says, "Hey, everybody, quiet down. We can't hear." And is Penn State taking a timeout? Yes, they have. With 3.01 remaining, Nittany Lions take a timeout. We'll see what Michigan State does when we come back. Three oh one remaining, tied at 28 to Spartan Stadium. Number 13, Penn State, and number 14, Michigan State. They've battled all day long and out. Michigan State sends out its offense on fourth down and about two feet to go for a first down. Well, if you don't make it, you leave your defense on the field and Penn State back up. And Dyke at quarterback. See if he sneaks it. Nope. They're going to get it to Duck that he's got the first down. Big, big keeps the drive alive. Give that man right there credit because if they had not made it, all the discredit would have gone to second. Mason and Robinson Randall, Jensen, the center, Moss, the fullback. And Duckett, who's been big all day, just got bigger. First down at the 11-yard line. Now they want to use as much time as possible. The touchdown ensues great. Otherwise, look for the short field goal, but Duckett's got another idea. He did! Touchdown! today. 
Tommy here to go after. The right side of the line, Robinson, Randall, and Mason, and Jensen. And McCoy, the tight end, and Duckett. But don't forget about Nick Saban and the fourth and one call to go for it to put him in this position. This is just a will of minds right here. The last leap backwards into the end zone. Adams trying to pop it loose. You have just met the future of Big Ten running backs. Right there. Brother Kiko, a great player here. This kid got all the tools to be something special. Captain's on the Penn State sideline, one with his helmet strapped, one with his helmet off, hoping that number 16 can pull a miracle here in the last two and a half minutes. That is here to punt. Now the kick, and Kenny Watson and Larry Johnson. And there's dynamite back there in those receivers. Line drive returnable. Kenny Watson from the nine. Watson up the middle. Holds on to it out to the 30-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Dell Computer, pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell. Tostito, dig in, kick back. And the U.S. Army, be part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. The Capitol building is lit up, and so are 74,000 fans in Spartan Stadium. Kevin Thompson at quarterback. Drops the throw. It's intercepted by PJ Turner. His second of the day. Interception thrown in the last 95 attempts by Kevin Thompson. And here comes Keith J. Duckett. Still going. That guy needs his own rest stop area. They haven't parked him yet. <laughs> There's Turner, number 35. He knows they've been throwing it to the tight end. Seven catches by the tight end today. Turner with his fifth interception on the year, he has two touchdowns, one on a fumble return and one on a touchdown an interception return. Duck it now, the single set back for under two minutes and the clock is running. Frank Wyatt's going to snap down. Here comes Duckett again. And again, he makes a few would-be tacklers at least pay for it to bring him down. Ryan Graham finally does. been in an upper tier bowl since 88. And do you remember it? Michigan State against Swanee's Alamada in the Rose Bowl. They won't be going to the Rose Bowl this year, but they have put on a performance that'll put them in a New Year's Day bowl for sure today. Jumped out to a big lead, held on for dear life, saw Kevin Thompson drag Penn State back by its shoelaces and now finally T.J. Turner's interception has probably ended any dreams of Penn State winning a 10th game. If Michigan State goes on to win, they'll tie for second in the conference with Michigan. And, and they'll go to one of the, the top tier goals. T.J. Duckett, four touchdowns among his 20 carries for 165 yards. You add his touchdown to Gary Scott's punt return. And Joe Paterno seeing one slip away here with a minute 34 left. 
a Penn State team that came in, did not show the Penn State pride that we talked about in the first half, but boy, did they ever in the second half. Led by Brandon Short right there, their senior middle linebacker and co-captain. And Courtney Brown has been all over the place again today, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough it just, unless they can rip one out here. It, to me, it just State. points up how difficult a conference the Big Ten is. Yep. Six teams in the top 25 coming into the day. Seven teams will go to bowl games. And probably two will be in a BCS bowl. Time for minutes. Stay tuned. The Thrifty Colorado Post Game Report with scores and highlights with John and Terry from across the country. Obviously, a lot of big games today. And this one was part of it. Michigan beat Ohio State. Minnesota came from behind to beat Iowa. Purdue over Indiana. Illinois won again. And now there was this one. And Michigan State is a minute and 34 seconds away from a huge win. Bajou brings him down after getting back to the line of scrimmage. And there's going to be the timeout. That will be Penn State's last. They can't stop it again. A Michigan State team that started the season 6-0. And, and Nick Saban said to us as we got ready to do the Purdue game, I just don't know, guys, sometimes we hit that mid-season stretch where things go badly. And you can go from 6-0 and to 6-5 and pretty quickly. Well, they did lose to Purdue. They lost again the following week. But they have recommitted themselves to doing what they did early in the season. Put it back together. Won a couple games in a row. And then there's a guy like Amp Campbell in his sixth year and his final minute and 25 seconds on this field. And remember, he's the guy that put the hit on the Penn State tight end that really was a key play here in this fourth quarter. The hit... It was scooped up by Richard Newsom, but Ann Campbell's the guy that caused the fumble. Grandpa Soup, they call him. Grandpa Soup. He talked with us about the fact that this time last year he had no idea what his future might hold. He didn't know if he was even going to be able to get out of bed. He did, with a neck brace and all, came out as a captain late in the season and then had to put himself back together to ever become a football player again, and nobody thought he could, but he thought he could, and he did. And he was a big part of this win that's coming up today. Courtney Brown, another stop behind the line. He just keeps adding to that list, but it's not going to be enough today. And against fourth down, and against this outfit, even without Arrington, I don't think he kicked the field goal. Yeah. You just let the clock run down and just go for, a, go for it on fourth down. And then let him have it 80-some uh, yards away. He went over and he told him, he says, I'm going to let the clock run down to two seconds, and then I'm going to call timeout. And here comes LeVar Arrington for the first time today. But he's anticipating field goal, and I would buy it. I don't think there'll be a field goal. I don't there. think there's going to be a field goal. Fourth time. Well, here comes Edinger. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know about this. Is anybody like... Edinger swinging a leg. He still hasn't run completely out there, but they appear to have their field goal unit out there. There's only 42 seconds left to play. It would seem to me that the only way that Penn State could have get a touchdown is to block the field goal, scoop it up, and run the rest of the way. The Ryder right on ESPN. The Saints go to Jacksonville. They'll face Mark Brunel in the first place. Jaguars. And then our action on Monday night. Heated rivalry dates back to the old AFL days. Denver Broncos take down the Oakland Raiders. 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock Pacific on ABC Sports. Well, here comes Paul Edinger. And here comes LeVar Arrington, maybe the best kick blocker in college football. Well, both he and Courtney Brown line up deep, as you see. They'll line up deep and they'll both run and they'll just sky. There'll be four hands in the air trying to block it. The one we saw the Iron to block against Purdue, he said, I even shocked myself. I didn't know I could get that high. 38-yard field goal attempt. And watch those two guys about the circle. For a sure win. Kick on away. No good. So Penn State has 37 seconds left. And no timeouts. And Frank Gannon talking to Kevin Thompson on the sideline. 
Here he comes. Arrington and Brown gave it a go. I'll tell you that. They may have altered the course or at least the pattern of kick a little bit. Went right between them, but it went to the left. Well, With time. Deep ball. Crenshaw made a catch. They're still alive. Out at the 41 yard line. 31 seconds. They move the sticks. I don't think the clock stopped. He was not about it. That's why Penn State's hustling. Up to the football. Three receivers are popping the screen. Now Kevin Thompson just spike it to yeah. give himself a little chance to think. Downs aren't as important as yardage right now. Every play could be your last, so this you, gives them an opportunity to talk it over on the sideline. You don't do the alley oop yet because you don't have to, to, to rely on luck. If you got three receivers on one side, a good route would be send two of them straight down the field 40, 50 yards, and send the third one and stop him at about 25 or 30 yards. Let the two clear out and let the other one stop behind them. Drummond to the top of your screen. Look the speed runner. Across, across one of the line wide receivers. The two from a slot goes out. They're going to throw it up for Drummond. Air it out there for him. Incomplete and Campbell was covering. And tops it through it. Too far. All right, you gave him a shot. Yep. He still got two downs to work. Early 5-28 Michigan State. Trying to hold on now. Missing a field goal that would have iced this thing. There's some exhaustion out there. Just saw Thornhill come out of his linebacker position. He could barely make it to the sideline. Yeah. How about those defensive linemen? They're dead. Thompson. Gonna throw short to McCoo and let him do his thing. And he'll get a first down and get out of bounds. At the 48 yard line. Pick up of 11. Thompson passed. Still not over. 19 seconds left. Well, a tip ball, it happened a couple of weeks ago against Penn State. Minnesota got it for a win. And that's not out of the realm of possibility right here, and that's what Nick Saban's worried about. Robin brings it in from the sideline. First down, Penn State. At the Michigan State quarter yard line. 19 seconds to play. They trail by a touchdown. Stewart, the tight end, shifts over and rides up on the left side. Thompson. Goes short over the middle. There's a crossing route to Drummond, but this time it's in a step back. That's all oh, that's up. If you don't pick it up, you're in the center of the field. And the clock is winding, winding, winding. It'll wind to a close. Finally, the officials try to stop it at one second. The team storming the field. The referee's trying to get Penn State one more play. The referee frantically waving his arms to stop the clock. And now they send everybody back to the sideline. They won't get this off. I don't think they will. They're going to have to hurry. They've got to get under center right now. They wind it. Thompson, now it's over. Yep. Michigan State will win it. Their ninth victory of the season. And they're perfect at home, 6-0 this year. Today's Chevrolet players of the game. Penn State's senior quarterback, Kevin Thompson. Duckets are freshmen from Michigan State. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund at beginning this year. Chevrolet also donates a thousand dollars to two high schools. Heartbreak for Penn State. Their season ends with three losses. Jubilation at Spartan Stadium. Final score: Michigan State 35, Penn State 28. For Lynn Swan and Bob Reese, I'm Brad Nessler. ABC Sports is online on ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Continuing tradition of excellence.